Okay guys, hi, this is Jackie M. Let me just make sure I am live before I start rattling on. Okay, looking promising. Good, 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 good. Okay, um, yeah. So, uh, hi, this is Jackie M. And don't forget to say hello in the chat if you're uh, just uh, joining me for the first time. Let me know where you're watching from. If you're a regular, say hello anyway. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jackie M. I've been live streaming on Twitch for a few months now. And I do Asian cooking, basically. My background is that I was born in Malaysia and I've spent... Uh, well, basically the last 30 years in Australia, I used to own a Malaysian restaurant, but nowadays, uh, because of uh, raising my Down syndrome child, I do mostly live stream and I create content around food. Um, and before I go on, quick shout out to Lenovo Australia for the laptops I use for my live streaming and for monitoring the chat. Johan, how are you? <laughs> I always like to show off my language skills, but I see Johan and I realize I don't know a word of Dutch. All right, but <laughs> how was your weekend? And uh, yeah, and also a shout out to Rode Microphones for the microphones I use for my live streaming. And also, uh, yeah, I think that's it today. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to have a go at making this uh, Vietnamese dish I ate over in Canley Vale here in Sydney just last week. Actually, it made such a strong impression, I thought I have to actually try and make it. Now, basically it's uh, a fish, it's two fish dishes, and <laughs> just pretend I'm French. Comment ça va? Hey, Sam, uh, Sammy, how you doing? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Woke up at 3.30 a.m. fully awake. What time is it now? It would, yeah, it would be middle of the night over in the Netherlands. But yeah, so uh, yeah, basically I was told, my first time having these two dishes, right? They are both uh, fish and I'm told traditionally it's uh, what they do is they use one fish and they split it in half and they cook two different dishes with it and they serve it with steamed rice and the flavors are meant to complement each other, right? And in fact, traditionally they use eel for this particular dish and uh, we had it with uh, silver perch. Um, <laughs> actually it was a miscommunication. We were supposed to have eel but at some point, um, you know, something got lost and we ended up getting served the same dish but using silver perch which is fine right and i figured if you can use silver perch maybe you can use fish fillets because these were like a, a, a whole fish like cut into chunks right so i went out to aldi on the way uh i was bored for 30 minutes so that you're going live <laughs> well there you go <laughs> see i i knew it was going to be uh someone was going to actually read my tweets sometime um, in all honesty, I used to be very active on Twitter, but nowadays I've slackened off a little bit. But uh, I'm all, it's just because I think to some extent I've spread myself a little bit thin across all these different social media platforms. So in all honesty, the best way to get in touch with me if you want to get my attention, because Twitter I probably check in once a day, once even every two days. Uh, a lot of the tweets are all automated, you know, with all these different um, scheduling stuff. But best way to get my attention, for those of you who don't know, um, yet because i haven't really announced it except within uh, twitch itself is uh, on discord right so if you hop over to my discord server um go to bitsly bit.ly slash discord jackie d-i-s-c-o-r-d jackie all lowercase and it will say that you've been invited to uh, join jackie's discord server just log in with one of your social media accounts i think you can just do that or create an account and that's where i sp kind of lurk most of the time or at least it actually notifies me when people start uh, chattering over there right so yeah um i bought this over at aldi this morning this was frozen fish okay this is frozen barramundi barramundi is one of the uh, more popular australian fish and so i bought a packet one kilo and it came in like um they're all individually wrapped fillets which is great okay so i'm going to use half of it for one of the dishes the other half for the other and apparently traditionally these dishes are actually cooked in clay pots okay um i'm just gonna i'm gonna assume that most people don't have clay pots right so i'm just gonna cook them normally 
and fingers crossed it will turn out well. Now, I did a little bit of research because like I said, this is a, a very new um, dish to me. I had to research how they were cooked. And I noticed that because the caramelized fish that I had at the restaurant is like, uh, you guys have heard me talk a lot about um, uh, cooking caramel or caramel sauce. I'll just show you again. This one over here, I, I talk about it every time I use it. Basically, in Malaysian um, and Chinese cooking, we use this in a number of our recipes. And usually, if you look in a Malaysian recipe that calls for it, it would actually call it thick soya sauce, right? Um, it's I guess most people confuse it with uh, sweet soya sauce, kicap manis, and this is not kicap manis. It's very, it's fairly similar though, but you notice the color is a lot more intensely black and also it's less sweet than ketchup manis, okay? It's a little bit so saltier and less sweet than ketchup manis. I tend to find ketchup manis just to be just sweet. Um, so, hey, Cyan, how you doing? <laughs> so, yeah, Cyan, I need to talk to you. If something takes off, right, I have to talk to this company. I, I, I will actually need to do more video editing, all right, for YouTube sort of thing. So, I mean, whatever else you say about live video, like, there are certain brands that still want like nice short edited videos for YouTube. So um, once I finalize the discussions with the company, I may get in touch with you about like getting some videos edited. Um, okay, so yeah, um, the caramelized fish I had at that restaurant over in Canley Vale. Canley Vale is basically right next to Cabramatta. You've heard me talk about Cabramatta, which is really the hub of where, um, you, where you get like a lot of Vietnamese food in Australia. Okay, it's kind of like it's virtually Cabramatta is called like Little Saigon here in uh, Australia, so it's a little bit of a tourist draw, but. Cabramatta is like one stop before Cabramatta on the train line is a suburb called Candy Vale, which is actually uh, has been coming up as a dining destination for families. OK, so I went and checked it out last week. And like I said, the cooking, uh, the, the, the caramelized fish is like a really dark caramelly color. And I have a feeling they actually use this. And when I Googled the recipe for it, I was quite surprised that there was no mention of this, right? So like I said, in Malaysian recipes, uh, we would call it thick soya sauce. Sometimes it's called dark soya sauce. But this particular brand here um, has basically rebranded this product, which we kind of like grew up knowing. Um, as cooking caramel, okay, so uh, I thought that maybe all these recipes would call for cooking caramel or thick soy sauce. They do not. Um, instead, they call for you to make your own caramel sauce, which I think is kind of uh, interesting in itself. Though having said that, I the pictures that they post next to the recipe based on making your own caramel sauce, the color isn't quite as intensely black as what I had at that shop last week. Okay, so I think I'm still going to top it up with a little bit of this. Um, but we have kicap manis here. <laughs> yeah, no kicap manis. That's uh, close enough. I mean, there are lots of different ways to spell like Malay Indonesian words, uh, and that's because um, you know it wasn't Romanized till the the colonials came along. So depending on which colonial, uh, uh, you know, if you're Indonesian, which you know most Dutch people would have an affiliation with, um, Indonesians will spell certain words. Um, the Dutch way, right? So sometimes ketchup can be spelled K-E-T-J-A-P or something like that. Um, and then Malaysia was a British colony, so a lot of the Romanized words were spelled kind of like more British. And then it also evolved after that as well. So there are lots and lots of different ways to spell the same words. If they sound the same, they're probably the same word, even if they're spelled a little bit different. Um, okay, so yeah, like I said, I'm going to actually uh, throw some of this in just to give it that intensity of color. One thing I don't have is black pepper because I forgot that there was a lot of black pepper in this uh, caramelized fish dish, but we'll just use straight out white pepper. Uh, the other dish is, like I said, a fish stew. It's a sour fish stew and it's so interesting to me because um, <laughs> because I'm ch ethnically Chinese, we Chinese, when we think of like um, uh, fish soups and that sort of stuff, we expect the flavors to be quite muted, okay? Because it's a clear broth. It's not like a, it's not a curry which is rich and, and creamy and like has a lot of spices. When you see a fish in a clear broth, you expect it to be like a mild, like very like fairly bland fish soup. But when I ate it, it was like holy moly! It's like quite strong flavored because it's a lot of it's a sweet and sour, and the sweetness and the sourness you don't ex associate usually with like a clear broth fish uh, dish, right? 
but uh, uh, so the first mouthful was a little bit like you know took a little bit of adjusting mentally but once you get into it you think oh my goodness this is really good and the ingredients that they have in that fish stew are quite interesting as well i don't have all of it here today but you know we can adapt so you know but um, it's got uh, pineapple in it, right? Which is quite unusual to like someone from my background to imagine pineapple in a soup. That's clear. I mean, we do like we have pineapple in certain Malaysian curries. We've got pineapple in like say you know like those uh, sweet and sour like Cantonese dishes or something like that. But you don't expect pineapple in a soup like a clear broth, right? So it's got tomatoes, pineapples, it's got sugar in it, right, for the sweetness. And also it actually has um, water convolved, it's what we call kangkong. I, I don't have any kangkong because I couldn't find it at the shops. Um, and also it also has uh, bean sprouts, which I didn't get either. I always actually have a lot of bean sprouts left over from my business because I still sell food once a week where I use a lot of bean sprouts. But I almost never like... Um, eat it up so I gave all my bean sprouts to my staff at the end of the other day and now I don't have any bean sprouts but I think you know to me uh, for my own particular consumption I can live without the bean sprouts right um, but I did buy some lettuce okay so I'm gonna throw some maybe some shredded lettuce into it so let's get into it um, and hey cookie how you doing see a whiskey hey how you doing pineapple in soup I know right it's a little bit like it takes a little bit of uh, getting used to but um, it, it works, it's very strange. So I bought like this, um, basically, look, I, I live in this suburb in Sydney, which is a little bit, well, I was talking to this other parent because Noah actually uh, went to a kid's birthday party, like uh, quite a, about half an hour's drive away um, towards Bondi Junction. I used to live in Bondi Junction, which is a very hip and happening town, right? Uh, suburb, but I've moved down to this part of Sydney, which is uh, only about 20 minutes drive from the center of uh, the city, right? But it's what we Australians call a, a little bit daggy, which means it's, it's the opposite of hip is daggy, all right? So you don't have like all the exotic, nice shops and whatever. But this is my local greengrocer, and they had some basically this like a half pineapple and it's, it's discounted to $1.25 and I guess it's half because the other half <laughs> got, um, you know, had to be thrown out, right? Okay, but at least it's the $1.25 for, for quite a big chunk of uh, uh, <laughs> pineapple. So we'll go with it. So first of all, I'm going to cut this into matchstick uh, uh, strips, right? And I was tempted um, to actually like I said, at the restaurant, the, they usually use eel, which is quite like, um, st uh, you know, quite sturdy. This may be a little bit soft because I'm using fish and I'm using fillers. I was tempted to just lightly drench this in flour and actually just kind of like fry it in about an inch of oil just to kind of like uh, hopefully help it to hold its shape a little bit. Uh, I'm still thinking about it, okay? Um, but they don't do that at the restaurant. The restaurant, like I said, they use the whole fish and, and, and it's quite firm, so there's no danger of that. But there is a danger if we cook this for too long that it might actually fall apart in the in the soup and in the in the sauce, the caramel sauce, okay? Just so we got, uh, remember. Okay, just let me get my gloves. And if we've got time, because I've got a feeling these two dishes aren't going to take too long. If we've got time, I still got a bunch of stuff to get through, just my regular cooking stuff. I've got some, I bought some banana chilies, which are these big giant chilies, and I might make a sambal with that. I actually have a, you guys know I eat the stuffed eggplant thing a lot. I really need to make some more of that because I'm craving that in all honesty. And I actually have some chicken drumsticks from last week as well. Okay, so anyway, let's cut this up, right? This is like, it's a little bit awkward because it's like, um, um, it's at an angle, but you know, usually you would want to actually be able to just kind of like cut down the uh, the outer layer the outer skin okay so let's throw that out and now you just want to cut this cut the skin off this specs is great thanks for following daddy ck daddy ck you gotta send me uh a post on discord right the um, the link to your Twitter account again because um, I don't know if I wrote it down the other day but I can't remember what it is so um, post, it on, post it on Discord and I will go and check out your food photos <laughs> that shape looks like, oh, it does look all, I'm tempted to kind of like uh, level it up but look, 
it's not too much of a bother. I'm not going to use much pineapple at all, but I'll save it, like I said, for $1.25. Um, I can just, you know, save it for other stuff as well. Okay. But it's amazing, like, how sometimes, like, I, I, I look, you know, when I started doing this, these live streams, I did purely Malaysian cooking. And within Malaysian cooking itself, there is so much to cover that I never really thought I needed to diversify to other cuisines. But it's amazing, like, um, you know, people think Vietnamese food, they think pho, you know, the British, uh, the, the, the beef noodle soup. But there's so much more to Vietnamese food than just pho that I'm just discovering now. Okay, so you've got these, you can see these little eyelets here, right? What you want to do is just cut them out. And the way we Asians do it is that we cut, we use a knife and cut like l these grooves into them, like this, okay, and just take them out. And you just go around and keep doing that. And, you know, we were talking, um, I forget which broadcast now, we were talking about what you eat at the cinema in Malaysia. My dad used to run the canteen at a cinema in Malaysia when we were growing up and we ate like one of the things that we sold at the canteen was cut fruit like this okay so it shows how different culturally Malaysia is to the west right so you cut this like this and then back in the day like I said when we sold these at the cinema we'll cut this into thin slices as well right and then you'll have like a little jar of salt um, with a tiny little spoon for people to spread salt on the pineapple when they buy that because the salt brings out the um, sweetness of a lot of fruits right so we had like cut pineapple we had cut pears uh, we had cut both types of pears the regular pears and nashi pears we had cut apples uh, we had um, watermelon and we had papaya okay so those are the main kinds of fruit we used to actually uh, sell at our canteen okay we did um, sell western stuff as well so we did have chocolates um, and, and soft drinks and we used to have beer as well like canned beer anchor beer and guinness and all that right uh, <laughs> the, uh, but we didn't have popcorn back in the day according to remy who's one of my mods uh, apparently they do eat popcorn in the cinema nowadays but back in my day they used to eat like uh, what was really popular with Malaysians was uh, eating these uh, melon seeds so they're basically like watermelon seeds you can imagine them and they kind of like I guess they're seasoned with salt sort of thing and you buy packets of melon, melon seeds or pumpkin seeds or uh, sunflower seeds okay those three different types of seeds and you people will buy them and they'll be chewing on melon seeds in the cinema and then at the end of the each session the floor will just be covered with like um, you know all these uh, melon seed skins okay and there'll be uh, the ushers will come around with the broom and sweep them up so but this is a long time ago because like i said i'm very old <laughs> um, of course the floors are bare they're not like carpeted like what you get here in australia okay and in um, I guess to some extent they're sort of bringing it back now but um, in Malaysia the cinema uh, seating uh, have like different uh, classes allocated to them right so they have like first class and and whatever I don't know what it is and the cheapest ones will be ones right up at the front of the movie screen where you have to kind of like strain your neck to watch them and then there's like uh, upstairs downstairs so the upstairs like um, is like the first class seating sort of thing so very very different to what it is nowadays okay so we've got these two chunks of pineapple what i want to do is just cut like like i said i want to cut thin sticks of them i don't know how much i would need probably there wasn't actually, in all honesty, that much pineapple in it, but it's, it's just noticeable by its very presence, okay? So let's just cut this in half and then just... Okay, so 
so that should be enough. Oh, you use the core too? I'm using the core only because it's going in the soup. If we were eating it, like um, back in Malaysia, like I said, when we sold it at the shop, we would actually say we cut out a slice, we would just like cut out part of the core sort of thing, just because the core is very fibrous. Okay, so just move that in there. And I want tomatoes. Okay. So I've got one kilo of fish. Um, so it's basically two half kilo serves of uh, fish dishes. They're not huge uh, um, amounts of fish in other words. So tomato at the restaurant, they were just cut in halves, right? So I'm just gonna do that. So I've seen it online where they actually dice it up, right? Okay, so just two nice tomatoes. And you're gonna want garlic. And the rest of it is just, yeah, it's just like flavoring. They use chicken powder, they use chicken stock, right, as the base, right? But you can just use water if you want. But yeah, chicken powder in a Vietnamese dish restaurant. That is CK, I was wondering the same, but now it makes sense it's going in the soup, yeah. <laughs> so I like my garlic, so I'm gonna use a fair bit here, okay? There you go. I might actually blend a bit more because I'm gonna use some for the next recipe as well. And you want some green onion. I'll cut up some lettuce leaves as well, actually, while I'm at while I'm at it. The green onion will cross-pollinate to the next dish as well. Green onion, otherwise known as spring onion. I'm told they're different. I'm told spring onion should have like a, a white bulb at the end, right? But, you know, I always called this, this spring onion until I got the appointed ambassador of this... Uh, fruit and vegetable festival and uh, one of the vegetable distributors corrected me and said this is actually called spring, uh, green onion so there you go this cutting board is a little bit awkward because it's one of those it only costs like 99 cents or $1.99 on sale or something like that. But it's one of those that actually fold up. The idea is that once you've chopped everything, you can fold it up and tip it in. But by virtue of the fact that it folds up, it seems to tilt inwards all the time. So it makes it hard to kind of get a flat level surface for you to be able to chop stuff up with. don't need that much but um, let's see how we go and lettuce this big lettuce here costs two dollars it does vary the price um, of fruit and veg can vary significantly but yeah so happened that it wasn't that expensive today okay so it's quite a large one for two dollars it was actually one for two dollars and two for three dollars and I couldn't see myself eating more than one lettuce, so that's enough. Is anyone going to TwitchCon? By the way, I I keep getting notified that TwitchCon tickets are for sale, are on sale, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so or have been to TwitchCon or anything like that in the past. So I'm just gonna cut this into shreds, right? Tardis. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I know, right? See, there are people who actually uh, know me from my vodcasts. Sometimes, because I, I pretty much run my vodcasts in a loop now. Sometimes it's like, oh, should I even bother or something like that? But, uh, you know, surprising how many people actually first caught my 
stream through my broadcast replays. And okay, by the way, I just forgot. <laughs> I'm actually multi-streaming this on to YouTube as well. If you're watching this anywhere except on Twitch, I can't actually see your chat comments, right? Or your chat room comments. So um, if you want to ask me any questions or just want to say hello, hop over to Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Jackie M food. And for those of you who are wondering, obviously it's redundant now because you're watching it. I get asked all the time, right? Or it seems as though people resist watching me on Twitch because they think you actually have to subscribe. You don't, okay? So everything I do is free. Um, if you do subscribe, it's only um, basically one way of you showing your support, okay? Which I totally appreciate, but having, you know, like I said, don't assume because you see the subscription button that you actually have to subscribe or you do have to do anything special to be able to watch my live streams, okay? Okay, so let's show this there. I wish I had a kitchen I could stream it. This terrible kitchen too tight. Do it in the living room like me. <laughs> this is my living room. And I was trying to think if there's some way I, I can actually convert my living room into just one big giant kitchen, you know, with a sink where I don't have, because at the end of each stream, I have to go into my tiny little kitchen and wash up and it's just painful, you know, but yeah, it'd be great if I do everything in my living room. Okay. Let's just mince up the garlic. And in fact, if this, because um, I'm negotiating to get a barbecue um, to be able to do some Asian barbecue dishes, right? If that happens, I'll be streaming from my balcony, okay? Which is actually a very, very tight space. So um, that'll be interesting in itself. Design your own. Um, my kitchen is big, but I don't cook. Whereabouts are you again, Noah? Design it your own house, 50% force fit. I would too, you know. Um, I have thought about it. Like, assuming that <laughs> that's predicated on me having a having the funds to actually have a house. Okay, I need to mince this a touch more. thing when I had my restaurant I used to live in the apartment upstairs in my restaurant but um, the one great thing about having my restaurant was that I did all my cooking in the restaurant kitchen right even for personal consumption and the great thing was when I had my restaurant I had staff to uh, to wash up after me as well so when people talk about wanting to own their own restaurant I usually discourage them but <laughs> For what it's worth, at least I didn't have to uh, clean up after myself, you know, after I do all my cooking. But, uh, now I have to clean up everything. And it's a pain. In fact, when I actually, like, because I had my restaurant, I lived in the premises for years and years because I, I actually originally took over an abandoned uh, uh, restaurant, right? Um, and used the kitchen to do my food production for my food business. And then the restaurant, I then finally opened it up as a restaurant because of popular demand. But, um, and then I closed it for a while and then I reopened it. But the whole time I was living upstairs and then using the kitchen downstairs. Um, yeah, <laughs> over the years, because when, when I did have commercial premises, I had staff who cleaned up the place, right? When I finally moved out, out and had my own place it was the first time in many years i actually had to do my own like uh, cleaning my own like vacuuming the floor and and cleaning the kitchen and all that I felt a little bit strange and even now i find it a bit of pain because it's like you know i only just swept like you know how many days ago and it's like all dusty and whatever because back in my restaurant days my place got cleaned every day you know that's part of the uh the routine for my staff Ireland. Oh, okay. A Sims house. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, no, cleaning is the worst. Okay, so uh, like I said, these dishes I don't think will take too long to cook, but I've got a bunch of other stuff that I want to be able to cook. I've got a feeling that my camera needs to be moved uh, 
tilt it up a little bit. Hang on. Okay, it's a bit of a pain. That's why I go with old fashioned stuff, easier to wash a mortar and pestle than a blender. Uh, yeah, but it's heavy too, you know. <laughs> okay, so that's all that sort of stuff. And what am I going to do? I'm kind of winging it to some extent here. I'm trying to figure out what I should use for the soup. Um, should I fry up the fish? I think I will fry up the fish. Okay, so let's heat up a little bit of oil and grab that. Okay, so this is a scan pan kind of. It's meant to be a paella pan. Sydney, visit. How you doing? Okay, so. gonna heat up some oil I'm just gonna like lightly like just kind of like fry it up just to hopefully help it hold its shape for the dishes that are coming up okay so I've got about a centimeter of oil here and, and that's another thing I picked up at Aldi right all these is five of them for nine dollars ninety or nine ninety five or whatever I'm not promoting Aldi. I don't, I don't have any affiliation for a lot of these things that I use, all right? I just thought I'd just mention it. <laughs> I used to think that washing a blender was a plain turns kitchen machine. You mean like one of these things? They're easier to wash. What are you talking about? Sitting the one I never catch streams. I know, right? 3.30. Look, um... I changed the time of my streams, Noah, so like uh, my Wednesday streams are going to be at 5 o'clock, my time, um, and my th uh, Friday streams are at 6 o'clock, my time, right, which will be morning yours for what it's worth, I guess. <laughs> I guess you must be like GMT plus 3, is that right? Something like that. Okay, let's use this one here. So you're like seven hours behind behind me. Let's move this forward a little bit more. Let's move this. Okay. What else? So this like uh, these two dishes should be pretty easy to make as far as ingredient availability are concerned, alright? You're not looking for any kind of special spices or anything like that. So these are the fish fillets or individually wrapped. And GMT plus one, is it? Oh, okay, so you're like nine hours behind me. Just opening these up. No, it might be GMT plus zero. It can't be GMT plus zero. I just had a meeting with someone from um, somewhere in the UK a few days ago, and they were only about seven hours behind me. I reckon I reckon it's give or take GMT plus three. So if it's three thirty now, it's three thirty. What time is it? I'm in twelve thirty. Okay, it is nine hours. It is nine hours. You're right. <laughs> but yeah, GMT plus zero, and then but then there's like daylight savings or whatever as well. It's very confusing. Daylight savings throws everything like out the window. And you know, guys, um, who's who's an Aussie here today? I was talking about like these must sticks, right? I was whining about must sticks, like uh, that. Um, Highlings was telling me on Discord that I need to try. And K Kenji, okay, Stretch Andy, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Noah is perfect now. He is uh, he's at childcare today. 
really happy to be back and everyone was really happy to see him and yeah so i was telling people how much i hated mustics because until Highlings told me about them i had never heard of mustics in my life right and then they said oh it's an australian thing it's fantastic and whatever you have to try it i go hunting for mustics and I buy them and I taste them in one of my live broadcasts and I say, this tastes disgusting, right? And then, like I said, my whole life never heard of mustics. Noah goes to a birthday party yesterday and he brings back like a little bag of lollies, right? And what's in there? Must a mustic, right? And because I was rummaging through his bag of lollies on the way home from the party and say, oh, look, there's a mustic here. And I don't know whether I was really hungry in the car, but I started munching on it. It's actually quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> Stretch Andy, oh, not me now. <laughs> yeah, the other Noah. <laughs> Noah, 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 my baby. Noah, my Down syndrome child. <laughs> but yeah, I might like try and hunt down another. This, every time I do this, I'm like, okay, this doesn't look like it's heating up. Let me just go and get another can. I need someone to sponsor hunger convert converts everyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm thinking it might be the hunger actually but it, it still smells because it smells like perfume it doesn't smell like food you know um but for whatever reason i was like i said i was eating in the car like driving and it's like you're munching and munching and munching i think it is kind of cute you know but maybe it's a different brand or or, or whatever sort of thing because they were telling me how there are different types of mustics and and, and whatever but yeah, I'm gonna have to look for it again. Okay, so this is empty. And also, last night, what did everyone do on their weekend off, by the way? Assuming you had it off, but... <laughs> last night, I thought I would watch... Um that new King Kong movie called uh, Skull Island. Has anyone seen it? Because I hire movies. I don't have Netflix and I don't have like um, cable. I don't even have a television. So everything I watch is actually online. So I hired a movie from YouTube, right? Which you can do, not everyone knows that. Um, so I hired that Skull Island. I worked. Ah, oh, what, what do you, I play games. <laughs> Johan. I know there's a lot of like you guys on Twitch are always playing games around the around the clock. What kind of work do you do? <laughs> okay, so let's drench these in a little bit of flour. So last night I thought I watched Skull Island and I told Crunchy, you guys know Crunchy, she's one of my mods, but she's called different names everywhere. She's called Crazed Banana at the moment on my Discord server. And so I said, oh, I was gonna watch Skull Island and she said, oh, I saw it, right, you know, and it's not that good. <laughs> and that just killed it for me. <laughs> so, um, and she was right, but I think I was impacted by what she said. So I'm blaming her for my lack of enjoyment of the movie. If anyone, has anyone else seen it? Sent the wife to Singapore again. I, uh, Skull Island was a little dis... Now you tell me, see, <laughs> Stretch Andy. I know Stretch Andy. I, Andy, I see your, your your wife is always going to Singapore. I'm really, really jealous. Okay, this is not quite hot enough. It should be sizzling, okay? But it doesn't matter. It'll come back. It'll come up to heat. Yeah, Skull Island. Like, it had good reviews. Rotten Tomatoes, kind of like, you know, not to say you trust everything uh, they say online, but I look at the review score, right? And it was like over 70%, like 72, 75%. You think that's fairly decent. Um, but the it's I mean it's not bad, but it's just yeah it wasn't compelling at all, and I again I blame I blame Crunchy right because she said uh it was like you know it was yeah it wasn't as good as I expected, so like while I was watching it I was thinking I'm not like you know I was getting a little bit distracted and I think I don't want to waste my life sitting through like two hours of something that's not interesting so I started doing other things while I was watching it so it's almost it's almost like uh yeah, a self fulfilling and in a way sort of thing 
But yeah, they're going, oh, why are you watching on YouTube? That's so lame, sort of stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but I watched another movie. Hang on, let me just tip this out. Because the, the fish, once defrosted, has like all this liquid, right? I'm just going to throw it out. You know what? I'm not going to throw it out. I'm going to add it to the fish soup. Okay, so let's put that aside because V agents are cheap. You basically washed it to not waste the money. I, yeah, well, that's the thing. It costs six bucks, you know, and I think, oh, well, I have to watch it now because it's six bucks. And like I said, it's not bad, so don't, 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 don't not watch it because of what I said, but it wasn't like. It was annoying, like the characters were annoying, that Samuel L. Jackson was annoying. Because you're used to seeing Samuel L. Jackson being like the really cool badass guy. Like he was just like some crazy, he was some Marlon Brando crazy Apocalypse Now character in that movie. Hey Remy, how you doing? I watched Batman The Dark Knight. That's another movie that I find really like, for whatever reason, my daughter, that's my daughter's favorite Batman, right? The Dark Knight. And everybody was raving about it. And when I watched it, I fell asleep. But you know what I watched? Um, you guys heard of the Emoji movie? Um, that's that's like an animated, like it's a cartoon, right? That came out like maybe a few weeks ago. Um, the Emoji movie, I got basically tickets for free to watch it for free because there was this basically like a, a charity screening of it for children with special needs, which Noah is one, right? And basically, I got invited to watch it a few weeks ago, and I thought, yeah, sure, anything free, that sounds good, right? So I signed up for the Emoji Movie for me and Noah, and that's for Saturday morning. And then I read the reviews for it, and it's got like 20%. Apparently, it got trashed on Rotten Tomatoes, right? And I think, damn, like, I'm going to waste my Saturday morning watching a movie that's meant to be rubbish. But I went ahead anyway, because Noah had just come out of like his cold and all that. And you think, well, you know, I guess he's been stuck at home for nearly two weeks. Let's get him out and about. And I sat through it and I actually quite enjoyed it. So <laughs> we watched the new Bay uh, Baywatch movie. <laughs> Why would you watch the Baywatch movie? The yeah, I know, Johan, look. I don't know, like, I don't know whether it was just too violent for me, that Batman movie. I, li I like Batman Begins, right? That was my favorite. But, like, uh, The Dark Knight just seemed like it lacked that. It was just too serious and too, too dark. But the Emoji movie, guys, if you do get to check it out, right? And it goes to show, I tell people I don't play video games or anything like that. But it goes to show how true that is because the movie sh um, is meant to be set around like this kid's cell phone, right? This kid's iPhone. So all the emojis live in his iPhone, right? And you see all these different apps in his iPhone. And one of the apps that they ended up in is Candy Crush. And you know, all these years after Candy Crush launched and everybody, every man and his dog I know, Astrogia, thanks for following. Every man and his dog I know watches, uh, plays Candy Crush. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, is that what Candy Crush is? Because I had never actually even like, I'd never downloaded it. I'd never looked over somebody's shoulders playing it or anything like that. So. And the other thing they, um, the other app they showed in the movie was uh, Just Dance Now. Does anyone know Just Dance Now? Again, I'd never known, I'd never uh, come across it. I love all three Batman movies. How was the How was the Baywatch movie, Andy? But yeah, Just Dance Now. So I saw how it worked, and guess what I did when I came home? I downloaded Just Dance Now. <laughs> so anybody wants to challenge me to a dance off, you know? I'm on, all right? But yeah, if you don't know what Just Dance Now is, it's basically you download it on your phone, and you're supposed to dance while holding your phone on your right hand, right? And it basically records your movement and gives you a score. 
which sounds really weird. I bet it's totally inaccurate, but who knows? It was kind of fun anyway. I know Just Dance from the V. Yeah, it's probably the same. Do you do? Do you use it though, uh, Johan? See, I don't have I don't have any consoles or anything like that. So um, it's meant to be based around that, but um, this is for people who don't have a console that you use your mobile phone. So you watch it on your computer, and basically you pair the computer with the app on your phone and you dance off to the music and the steps on the computer while holding it, holding the phone on your right hand. It's a little bit awkward because, you know, phones are quite big nowadays. But yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I just know it exists. Okay. <laughs> well, you gotta get it and we'll have a dance off, all right? We'll see who gets a better score. Fate Watch was great fun. Is that right? I know it had Hoff in it. I didn't know Pam was in it. How do you know where to move when you have to hold it? You're meant to actually like mirror the, um, you know, what you're watching sort of thing. So it's, 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 yeah, like I said, it's probably completely inaccurate. I can't dance to save my life, right? So I, I just downloaded it for a laugh. And it's, <laughs> I just did the one, one song and that, that was quite exhausting, but it's good fun, right? So you can actually basically like, um, compete with your own friends or whatever so and and you know compare scores or whatever so it's kind of fun so i'm gonna remove the oil i'm sure you want to dance on my muse <laughs> what type of fish is that also that dancing app sounds fun i know right yeah go guys go download it and then uh connect with me on discord right and then like i said i, I think there's some way you can actually like um, challenge people or something like that yeah I, I bet it's completely inaccurate because like how can you dance properly when you're waving your hand and all that sort of stuff and turning around but yeah I got a score at the end of it but I was happy with that um, this is Barramundi by the way so the one bad thing about these like I don't know why they don't like insulate the handles of this thing of let me just get another okay so like I said, um, traditionally with this dish, they use eel, okay? And they don't pre-fry it like I did, just did. I'm just pre-frying it just to hopefully help it hold its shape a little bit better when I cook it. I don't want it falling apart. Um, this over here. Right, so. Okay, so I'm gonna use this pan. I'm getting hungry, can't eat till Juliana sleeps. Oh, hey Oleg, how you doing? How do you choose what advertising is displayed on the channel? Is there any control? So you select brands or partner? Um, you mean like my overlays or the advertising? I don't, I, see, I don't see any ads because I'm streaming, right? So I, and I don't go around watching. But if you mean the overlays, I basically stick my, um, yeah, I just decide what overlays I wanna put up. But yeah, any ads you see on Twitch is determined by Twitch. Because a couple of times in the past, because there's on my dashboard, there's an option for me for me to run like a thirty second commercial or something like that. Um, but I don't actually see it myself, so I don't actually know what they play. Your handphones have gyrometers. Not sure if they work well. Is that right? See, you know better than me. I know nothing about mobile phones. I need a new mobile phone, guys. So uh, anyone, um, <laughs> anyone has contacts at Huawei or Samsung, uh, talk to me. All right, <laughs> we'll work something out. Uh, let me put this away. Okay, so I've just got a tiny bit of oil in here. I'm gonna throw in the garlic, some of the garlic. So first up, we're gonna do the uh, sweet and sour fish stew, right? So that's about a tablespoon of minced garlic. I'm just gonna add a little bit more oil to it. But 
yeah, my Discord channel, if you're wondering, is just uh, bits.ly slash uh, Discord Jackie, all lowercase, right? And that's my Discord server. Lenovo don't do first. Lenovo do Moto, because Lenovo bought over Motorola, but I haven't seen them in Australia yet. So, uh, and I asked like about a year ago. Mo I don't know if anyone has any Moto phones, right? You, they've got all these add-ons that you can actually click on to them. So you've got the phone, and then like if you want like a high-end camera to it, you can buy the. I don't know what they're even called, but they're like snap-ons almost like snapping on like an extra battery or something like that but then con that converts your phone into something really like yeah like a professional camera and all that what do i want to go in here let me have a look um i should have looked up the recipe a little bit more um but let's throw in the tomatoes okay so you want to soften them up garlic tomato I'm gonna to throw in the and look a lot of recipes I think um, have more steps than what I usually show you guys because a lot of recipes talk about like um, um, you know I guess marinating the seasoning the fish with this and then letting it sit and 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 and, and all that sort of stuff. I, I, I skip all that because I've never really found them to to make much difference. Okay, so you see with a lot of my dishes, I don't pre-season, I don't like um, pat it dry or whatever, right? But that's just me. Okay. So this is the leftover fish juice, okay, just throw it in. And I've got some chicken stock here. Hey, this one mommy. I, uh, I buy my phones from China cheap, you managed to last. What, what brand is it, Johan? I do think that China has like cheap phones, right? So. Let's throw in the fish. Okay. It's a little bit cloudy because of the uh, the stock that I put in, right? And then what you want is tamarind juice, tamarind concentrate, which adds sourness to this because you want you want a uh, sweet and sour uh, broth, right? But like I said, the flavor is fairly strong. It's not subtle like your typical Chinese um, fish broth, okay? So the flavor will be quite um, quite distinctly sweet and sour, right? So fish sauce, I'm going to grab some water. I love caramelized fish. What type of what type of fish am I using? I'm using barramundi. The um, barramundi is quite um, popular in Australia, but um, let's put a bit more water. I didn't put that much chicken stock because that's actually a concentrated chicken stock, right? But if I had like a regular chicken stock, I'd put more in it. So I've actually basically um, halved it. Uh, I'm surprised. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I'm the only person who doesn't know caramelized fish now. Because when I uh, yeah when I posted about it earlier, people said oh yeah I love that or I love the fish stew or something like that. I feel I feel really ignorant because um, up until a few weeks ago, every time I think Vietnamese, let's go eat Vietnamese food, I think of like about two different dishes, right? Um, so I haven't been as adventurous as, as I should have been. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put tamarind concentrate in it. There's the tamarind concentrate. This is like a souring agent, okay? So if you can't get tamarind, get just use lemon juice, right? So don't stress out too much. And the version I had at the restaurant, actually the soup is quite clear, which tells me either they do use lemon juice or they don't use a lot of tamarind at all. Because tamarind can be quite, uh, it will cloud out your, your, it will cloud up your dish, okay? Because it's like a brown, um, pasty thing here. And this is um, pre, 
extracted for you but a lot of recipes if you look online for uh that call for tamarind they usually will suggest that you buy the tamarind pulp and then you simmer it in hot water and then you strain it through and extract the 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 the, the paste out of it and discard the seeds all right that's just like an extra few steps that i prefer to avoid which is why i buy like concentrates different brands of concentrates also will come in different concentrations and that's something you got to keep in mind okay so it feels if it feels really thick um it will be a lot more sour if it's really runny it will be less so okay so you just got to adjust your recipes accordingly so i'm just putting one spoonful in here current phone is from echo never heard of them uh um i think um yeah i'm gonna google echo let me write this down echo are they are they good though, uh, Johan? Or one of my favorite dish order we eat at Vietnamese restaurant. This and the spring rolls. Ah, okay, cool, right. I like uh, Vietnamese pancake, and I only started liking it uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, when we filmed in Cabramatta, because I was eating it wrong the whole time up until then. Because I'd ordered it a couple of times in the past, but Vietnamese pancakes they're really large here in Australia, apparently in Vietnam they're smaller, but they're like a crispy, like uh, kind of like yellow hued uh, rice flour pancake that has like bits of prawn and oftentimes they have pork in it. And because I don't eat pork, right? Like I always tell them to skip the pork. Um, and they have a lot of bean sprouts and all that. And I used to eat and they'll have like the Vietnamese fish, like the sweet and sour uh, fish sauce on the side. And I used to basically just cut it like with a knife and fork and just like eat like chunks of it and it turns out I've been eating it wrong this whole time you're meant to actually wrap it with like a lot of herbs and salad leaves and then roll them up virtually into like a uh, like a salady spring roll and then you dip the salad the spring roll with a ch little chunk of the pancake into the sauce and you eat it like that so you're essentially eating like 90 percent um 90% like um, salad, which is really, really healthy and a lot nicer as well, right? So I'm going to put my good old chicken powder in here, okay? Chicken powder is like, uh, see the fish are starting to fall apart. So you just got to be a little bit careful. I'm going to throw in the pineapple in now too, okay? And the pineapple, obviously, the more, the sweeter the pineapple, um, the sweeter the product will be and the younger the pineapple, the more sour it will be so you just have to adjust all the flavors accordingly right um but yeah chicken powder is like using chicken stock cubes but it's nicer i keep telling people it does actually contain msg right so but this is the brand i use at the moment <laughs> unless i get a sponsor from a different company <laughs> okay so more chicken powder i'm gonna put sugar in it okay i hope i've got enough sugar <laughs> Elephone is a this one. Oh, now you tell me. Okay, elephone. Well, I never heard of elephone. That must smell good. It's not bad. Yeah, it smells sour at the moment, but it needs sugar. I'm just trying to think how much sugar I have. If I, I hope I'm not running low. Uh, okay, I got this. So it's gonna need a fair bit of sugar because like I said it's quite strong flavored all right you, you do notice the sugar in it quite distinctly so I've put about three tablespoons so far I will need more let me have a dig around okay good I do have some more <laughs> yeah I'm told there's another brand of chicken powder I think it was a uh, cookie who told me actually so I might try and hunt down the company and see if they want to send me some to use. Okay. I keep thinking I'm missing something in here. Um, I'd hate to, like, at the end of it, realize, oh, I forgot to put this in. But let's taste test this. Okay. It needs to be more sour and it needs to be more sweet as well okay uh, more sour so that'd be tamarind hey tonight hey how you doing 
Ex Bobsy, hey. <laughs> okay, so let's put another spoonful of the tamarind. I just want to attempt this dish while the memory is still fresh in my mind about what the flavor is supposed to be, okay? A sports mom. Thanks for following. Okay. So if you guys know like sweet and sour, like pork, I don't eat pork, but you, you know that flavor, but it's quite intensely sweet and sour. This soup, like, like it's not quite that like concentrated, but you get the idea, okay? The flavor is not meant to be subtle. Okay. So like I said, the version I had at the restaurant had like some uh, gang gong or ong choy, what we call ong choy, the Chinese basically Asian spinach in there as well. Okay, but it's getting a lot closer. So I've put probably about four or five spoons of sugar in there now. Mm, okay, sweetness is there. I think it still needs to be a bit more sour. Let's put that in. Oleg, what do you honestly think of Indonesian cuisine? I've seen it to be different in cities and villages there. Jackie adds chicken powder to everything. It, it is barramundi, yeah. Fish stew, yeah. yeah don't more sugar cancel out. Um, <laughs> more sugar cancel out the sourness. It, 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 it's a different flavor, so it, yeah, it, it balances it out, I think. Um, in all honesty, like when the tomatoes soften up some more it will turn more sour okay so I, I'm a little bit impatient by trying to um, get the flavor basically without um, properly cooking everything first okay this is pretty much there um, Insta pot chicken powder cheesecake. Hey, look, <laughs> it might happen, you know. Um, what do I think of Indonesian cuisine? Um, I like it a lot. <laughs> you think I'm going to say something negative? <laughs> I like it a lot. But um, the, the, the difference, I think, between Indonesian, Thai and Malaysian is that Indonesian and Thai cuisines are very homogenous, right? You think Indonesian and you think like, all the flavors are fairly similar. So you've got the rendang, you've got the chicken curry, you've got the fried chicken or whatever, the nasi goreng. All of them have a very particular flavor profile. When you think of Thai food, you think of Pad Thai, you think of uh, red chicken curry, you think of uh, green chicken curry and all that. So they're fairly distinct in that way. When you think of Malaysian food, um, it's more like disparate, right? Depending on, because Malaysia, like I, I keep telling people, Malaysia is multicultural and it sounds like such a cliche in this day and age. But Malaysia is very distinctly three different cultural groups. There are more cultures around that, obviously, but the three distinct strands of Malaysian cooking provide um, very distinct flavors in a, of themselves, right? So something can taste very Chinese, something can taste very Indian, something can taste very Malay, Indonesian. Okay, so it's hard to nail down per se. Um, and what I'm trying to get to is that, what I'm trying to get at is that there's more variety of flavors in Malaysian cooking, if you know what I mean. But yeah, right, you're right, um, Indonesia, for those who don't know, there's no such thing as an Indonesian ethnic race per se, right? Indonesia is made up of like a many, many uh, different ethnic groups, right? The Javanese, the Sumatrans, the Balinese and all that, they're all ethnically different. And when Indonesia was, uh, as a country, was created, um, they call it Indonesia, but there's no actual Indonesian race per se, okay? So someone who's Indonesian would be Indonesian Javanese or Indonesian Sumatran and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there are a lot of different groups. I, I, I forget how many, right? And in fact, Indonesian and Malay, um, the language, are the same or very similar, like 80%. Indonesian versus Malay is about 80% similar, okay? Um, they picked Malay as their national language um, simply because they didn't want any um, fighting. Uh, they didn't want to create any kind of like civil unrest by picking Javanese as the language. Javanese is the dominant ethnic group in uh, Indonesia. They didn't want to pick Sumatrans because the Javanese would get jealous and whatever. So they ended up picking Malay as Indonesian, right? And Malay... 
ethnic group is an ethnic group in Indonesia, but a very minor one. So no one can complain that oh they're giving preference to these and whatever. They're basically picking like a tiny little ethnic group there and say, okay, we're going to use your language as our national language, right? But of course, it's evolved over the last fifty years to the point where it's only about eighty percent the same. Okay, that's my little <laughs> my little history lesson about Indonesia, and I know this because I studied Indonesian at the university. Uh, <laughs> um, we're gonna get some history lesson. <laughs> I know. See, I lived in Malaysia like up until I was seventeen and a half, and I didn't know any of these. I knew this only by virtue of studying, um, as you know, because my degree is in languages at Sydney University. I learned this at Sydney University here in Australia. Um, so got that right, and I wanna throw in some of these letters. So one of the um, byproducts of uh, the differences between the Malay and Indonesian languages uh, was that when I did Indonesian at university, um, the even though it was called Indonesian and Malaysian studies, all the lecturers were all Indonesian, and when we had to submit our work and in, um, you know our essays and all that, my um, my correct Malay basically sounded like broken Indonesian, right? And when the corrections were made by my lecturers, to me, they, they uh, you know, it, they, they messed up my essays to the point where they sounded like broken Malay, right? But they can still understand each other. But another byproduct of me doing Indonesian at university was actually my brother told me this <laughs> when I was trying to decide what subjects to do. And uh, because Australia, for those of you who don't know, is... Um, you know, one of Australia's popular tourist destinations is Bali in Indonesia, right? He said, look, I'll just do Indonesian as one of your subjects because you'll be competing against um, Australians who've been to Bali for, or who want to go to Bali for a holiday, <laughs> right? So um, I was basically like in, you know, in an environment where the Aussies that I was basically not competing against, but my classmates were all like at that level where they thought, oh, it'd be nice to learn some Indonesian so we can go to Bali for a honeymoon or something like that. Um, so it was a very easy uh, subject for me to pass. Um. Okay. I joined a stream, man told me about the Romanian history and showed me music. It was great. Hey, Grimes, how you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Tell me more in the future. Yeah. Hey, hi, Lings, how you doing? <laughs> okay, so look, this looks a little bit messed up. Brad, thanks for hosting. <laughs> okay, so this looks a little bit messed up because the fish has actually fallen apart a little bit. So it's just as well I fried it up a bit. But um, if you want, what you can do is actually just add the fish very, very late in the stage, right? Simmer this. Um, in all honesty, um, the soup at the restaurant was a little bit more um was a little like it been reduced a bit more so it was almost like it wasn't caramelly or anything like that but it was a little bit thicker okay so I'm, I'm inclined to actually take some of this out and let it simmer a little bit longer why don't we do that um i know nothing about uh i know i know a bit about asia right obviously because i grew up in that part of the world but i know nothing about romania or anything like that but hosting a stream, uh, tourism. Hosting a stream is uh, uh, basically like when you go to Brad's channel, you will see my my broadcast at the moment. Basically, is what it means. I don't get why people sell our fish too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take out the fish and I'm gonna simmer this a bit more till it's reduced. Right. I'll take out some of the lettuce as well because I don't want it to taste all lettucey at the end of it. So I'm going to add some more pineapple to this because I feel that it could use a bit more pineapple, personally. And hi Lings, by the way, I was talking about your mustics earlier. Irony of ironies, all these years I was saying I've never tasted mustics before, I've never even heard of mustics. Then yesterday, like after all my whining about how crappy it tasted that you got me to buy, I go to a party for baby Noah, birthday party, kid's birthday party, 
and in his little lolly bag there was a must stick and I ate it and it was actually quite nice okay for what it's worth I don't know what brand it was though so let's throw in a bit more pineapple okay let's cut it up I don't know if you guys can hear the if you can hear like what sounds like a vacuum cleaner going it's not me it's somebody outside yeah I've never been to Bali in all honesty so uh, I can't really say what it's like um, my my niece got married in Bali like uh, about a year and a half ago and I didn't go because I didn't want to fly to Bali for a wedding um, So let's reduce this some more and move it away. Vacuum cleaning. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner. Um, I don't know if it's like the, the maintenance guys, whether they're blowing leaves off the lawn or something like that. Because this is an apartment block and they've got maintenance people come around like once a week or something like that to do stuff. But yeah, it sounds like a vacuum cleaner, but they, it could be something else. Is this dish the Asam Laksa to the Vietnamese? That's a good point, right? Yeah. Told you they were good. <laughs> Look, I wouldn't go that far to say that they're good, all right? The, the, I, I, maybe I was hungry because I was driving home after a long day at a party and you were standing... Like yesterday was actually quite cold in Sydney, all right? Like it wasn't raining, not like Melbourne. It wasn't raining. It was dry, but it was like really like had strong winds and the party was outside in this park. So you're standing around for two hours, like just like trying to keep warm, and then finally you go in the car and you rummage through his lolly bag because Noah doesn't eat candy, okay? Because he's got no teeth, and you think, oh, I'm gonna get stuck with like uh, actually, <laughs> there was like some Australian like uh, candy in there, which I'm gonna add to the you guys who won the uh, draw the other day. <laughs> there was like a caramel koala in there, which is great, um, and something else in there as well. Um, but yeah, it had one must stick in there. I was thinking, holy crap, like my whole life, never heard of must sticks, never even knew they existed. And then after all these talk about must stick, there was a must stick in his uh, lolly bag. And like I said, it could have been, I was just hungry, but I was driving and I thought, oh, let's just try and munch on this. And that was actually not bad. You have luckily Vegemite hunting it for Russia. Do you like Vegemite? That's Noah. Uh, I, uh, Noah was actually, it's quite funny. I tolerate Vegemite, but I wouldn't go out and buy it. I did a broadcast with Marmite chick doing Marmite chicken a few weeks ago, so I had to buy a jar of Marmite, which turned out to be from New Zealand. And I didn't know it at the time, but apparently New Zealand Marmite is very different to UK Marmite, which I grew up eating. Okay, granted I hadn't eaten Marmite in like thirty years before that, but um, that jar of New Zealand Marmite to me tasted very similar to Vegemite. Um, so I started using it up for Noah to eat on his toast because apparently at school he'd been eating Vegemite um, toast So um, he ate it for a while and then he got tired of it and now at school he won't eat the Vegemite <laughs> toast either But I just think it's really interesting that little kids at childcare they will actually be um, Feeding them Vegemite already. I thought it was more like a grown-up thing, you know, but yeah, I think It's part of Australian culture to kind of like get your kids started on Vegemite early on Okay. Mm, okay. Love Vegemite. I love Marmite. <laughs> okay. Any any Aussies here who uh, who actually love Vegemite? Now it feels like it needs more chicken powder. So let's throw a little bit more in. Okay. So this is a balance of flavors. Like I'm trying to reduce it a bit more. I'm gonna cook some rice because this is meant to actually go really well with boiled rice, right? So let's bring out my pressure cooker. Again, uh, just a shout out to Prestige Home Appliances that sent me out this pressure cooker, which I've been using to cook my rice with. So let's do the rice bag. Okay. So 
Monster Hellboy is veg and cheese. Veg and cheese. They're like what they call a uh, tiger toast, right? You're thinking tiger toast or something like that? That's so like, yeah, I, I vaguely remember it from my, my first kid's uh, childhood. There's actually a way to, if ever you buy these big bags of rice, right? They are secured with these like strings and there's a way to make sure you cut the right string so that when you pull it, everything just comes off and it looks like I cut the wrong one. <laughs> but when I, ha I used to buy like 25 kilo of huge bags of rice and you have to figure out because this is actually like sewn together and you just cut one stri one piece of thread and then you pull it and everything just pop, uh, opens up easily, okay? But I don't remember which one it is now you're supposed to cut, so I've ruined it. And now, <laughs> I used to hate Marmite, now I love it. Okay, which non-Aussies actually have tried and loved Marmite? either love or hate it like I tolerate it I, I'd eat it but I wouldn't think to buy some to uh, to eat but you know then again I don't eat bread anyway sort of thing I eat like rice I don't think I've ever had ever tried marmite okay I can never get it right oh it's gonna cut again <laughs> yeah just like me <laughs> yeah it's a very Asian thing it's almost like a like, you know, if you're a real Asian, you would know which of the, uh, because like I said, it's basically like a, a weave, right? Uh, let me just close the door. Vegemite, Marmite is different. I thought Marmite was different as well, but like, um, like I said, that, that jar that I bought, uh, have you tried New Zealand Marmite? It tasted to me suspiciously like it was like New Zealand's attempt to uh, steal um, the Vegemite recipe. Because it was really strong. I remember Marmite like being quite strong, but not quite to that extent. So I've got the rice in here. Let's add some water. Okay, let me just get a little bit more water. Okay. This is reducing, but it's also changing the color a little bit. Okay, so the one I had at a restaurant is a, a much clearer broth. Okay, just so you know, um, but it doesn't matter. The flavor is there anyway. And like I said, I've got a suspicion, you know, that the restaurant that I had this dish in. Um, may have used lemon juice instead of uh, tamarind, like what the what the online recipe says. Okay, because tamarind does actually produce this kind of color. Okay, whereas the one I had at the restaurant was like a like a clear fish soup sort of thing. Okay, so let's put this in. So that's cooking. Marmite factory in New Zealand burned down some time ago. Is that right? I did not know that. Why some Australians, uh, when some Australians left Vegemite, my flat brought it to the office. Six people got slightly. Is that right? <laughs> How funny is that? <laughs> I always imagine Russia to be too far away for like anybody to, for any Aussies, even Aussies, to actually like spend any time there you know okay okay so this flavor is i think it needs a little bit more sugar now <laughs> where's my sugar okay i always thought marmite is british so did i uh sea of whiskey wasn't it earth cake damage i want new zealand marmite seriously sea of whiskey next time i have to send you anything i'll send you a jar of it has molasses in it, UK Marmite doesn't. Is that right? But molasses would make it sweet, right? I did not I did not know that. It's been fun. Must depart for a time I've got a lecture. Okay, cool. See you around now, uh, hi links. Drop by and say hello again if we're still going. Well, I was doing the live stream here on Twitch, uh, using that um, 
using what I thought was just Marmite, Marmite. And someone asked me whether it was a New Zealand or Australian or, or, or British Marmite. I said, I have no idea. I didn't even think to check, right? And when I did check, it was actually New Ze from New Zealand. And because it was the first time I attempted that dish as well, it, um, and I was facing it on like recipes online, the amount of Marmite that I ended up putting into it ended up being too much because it tasted really, really strong. But uh, yeah, <laughs> and I think it's because the recipe was based around UK Marmite. Um, spring onion. All right. So this actually doesn't look too bad at all, does it? Okay. So that's the fish stew with pineapple and tomato. Um, I might plate it up a little bit better. Okay, let's get on to the caramel fish, yeah? So again, I'm a little bit concerned that the fish will fall apart. Like I said, um, they usually use like uh, fish on the bone, yeah, for these um, dishes. Eel on the bone, more traditionally. And I think at that restaurant we had, um, like I said, it's, um, it's eel, like two different styles, right? Clay pot and with a sour fish stew. Um, but they had a concession where they actually used silver perch instead of eel. I guess it's for the white people, right? <laughs> um, in case people might think that eel was a little bit too exotic. And what they ended up serving us was in fact perch, even though we didn't actually ask for perch per se, maybe they just got, they just assumed or something. Okay, so based on Marmageddon, <laughs> I love the New Zealand version. It does look good, eh? Yeah, it tastes pretty good. And it's meant to be like, um, because of the sourness, it's meant to uh, like, and, and the strong flavors, it's meant to be eaten with a lot of like boiled rice, right? So basically when we had it at the restaurant, um, like I said, they cook it in clay pots um, and they had like two clay pots, one, uh, one of each type of fish. And then they had like a third clay pot with uh, basically rice, okay? So you're meant to eat it with lots of rice because the flavors complement each other. So the caramel fish, I found that the caramel fish dish was actually actually you know had a lot of salt in it right um but apparently like i said online what they suggest you do is actually caramelize the sugar first so let's try that and like i said i'm still going to top it up with some of my cooking caramel right to give it a more intense color so let's throw in some sugar Okay, hopefully this works. And a bit of water. And you want to cook it till it caramelizes. And then you're going to add some fish sauce to it. The clay pots used, were they salt glazed? <laughs> I don't know if they're salt glazed. Anyone, they're your typical uh, Chinese clay pots, the ones with the handle. Um, they are like, yeah, they're glazed on the inside, right? But yeah, on the outside, they're, like, they're just like these kind of like caramel colored things. I used to have them, not anymore, but... Um, yeah, I don't know <laughs> they're salt glazed or, or whatever. But they're the, your typical standard Asian clay pots that you see when you eat like clay pot rice or whatever, salt glazed. Okay, well, there you go. See, you know more than me. Yeah, they're like your, your, your standard like Chinese clay pot that you see in all the, all the restaurants and all the movies. So that's the rest of the fish that I'm going to use. And 
Yeah, like I said, I'm using Faramundi because it was readily available in fillet form, but um, the restaurant did use uh, sea perch, right? silver perch or whatever it is. But it is on the burn, all right? So you just got to be a little bit careful with the burn if you eat those. But if this actually works, this would be a good way to uh, make your own caramel sauce. You always hear me talk about. Thanks for following. You always hear me talk about this cooking caramel, which is, um, you know, to be fair, much darker in color. But um, you know, people are always asking me whether you can make your own. Okay, so this is one way you do it. All right, you caramelize the sugar, and then if you were Chinese, I guess you would add soya sauce to it, right, to give it that the, the color and the saltiness. But this being a Vietnamese dish, they use. Uh, fish sauce, right? Let's get some of this away. That. I need a dishwasher in my living room. I need a sink and a dishwasher, and then I'm sort of. And I need a refrigerator, alright? So. <laughs> Any refrigerator appliance people. I want a big refrigerator here I can just fetch the stuff from. Okay, so it's just slightly turning colour now. You want to actually apparently get this brown. And let me just see if I can dig up the recipe just to make sure I got it right. But as far as flavors, it's pretty simple, all right? So this is meant to be a, a sweet and salty dish um, with garlic. So garlic, um, fish sauce, chicken powder, and sugar, right? And some green onions as well. in the background yeah I'm a little nervous especially with the caramelized process I don't want to end up burning it yeah I mean like you know if I were going in blind if I didn't research the recipe what I would have just done would be just to saute the garlic toss in the fish add this and then just um, add a little bit of water so it can absorb like simmer a little bit and absorb the flavors and then adjust the flavors by adding sugar and adding uh, fish sauce to it all right that's how I would make it but Based on the recipes I've seen online, they actually uh, caramelize the sugar first. Um, but having said that, like I said, like the, the one that I had at that restaurant, the color was much more intense than the ones posted next to the recipes that I found online, right? Let's have a look. Just make caramel sauce a couple of times and you'll get used to it really fast, huh? Big man, thanks for following. Oh, like when I look at your kitchen, I forget that England used to send people to Australia as a punishment. <laughs> Same with Siberia. Do you like Australia? I love Australia. <laughs> I, I love I love living in Sydney so much that like I used to have this travel bug, right? I used to want to travel, 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 travel. But then I've come like almost like I've turned almost one eighty now, where I just kind of think like I've been to the states five times. I've lived in Europe. I've you know, I used to travel as much as four times a year to Malaysia that like ultimately I kind of think, look, you know, we got it pretty good here in Australia. You can get the Asian, all the Asian food you want. You've got, we've got beautiful weather, beautiful scenery and like, I, <laughs> you know, it takes me a little bit more motivation to want to actually pack my bag and travel nowadays. I mean, I still love traveling, but like, um, I used to travel at the drop of a hat, but now I, I just have to think it a little bit closer. Um, yeah. So look, you want to uh, round this, right? 
and it's getting there, getting there, getting there. And it's getting quite smoky too. Okay, let me just reopen the door now that the noise is gone. Okay, it says dark brown. And I'm going to throw in some fish sauce. Okay, you see that? Let's taste test it. Okay, add some water just to reconstitute it. Okay, so the color is actually quite dark now. Let's put more fish sauce in it. because now we're going to cook the fish timing has to be perfect this one mommy if you attend this dish next week um, add the fish sauce a little bit sooner than I did because now it's got a little bit of like a uh, an aftertaste to it okay so let's put in the um, oil And throw in the garlic. Caramelization, once it starts looking like brown, can go dark brown. I know, right? Didn't you, did, did you just see what I did? Because the recipe says, oh, you do it till it's dark brown and then you add the fish sauce. But um, I did it when it was kind of like medium brown and who was on the turned virtually black. Diluting other liquors, not much of an issue. Making caramel sauce take off the heat before the target darkness. Yeah, I was going to say the same because that's what I tell people when I do fried uh, crispy onions, right? I always tell people, look, don't wait till it's the right shape you want. You want to take it out a few shapes before, at least a couple of shapes before because it will continue cooking. See, that's why I never trust recipes you read online. <laughs> yeah, this is where, I, this is where I, uh, I make all the mistakes for you. But look at the sauce, it's like, you know. And you're going to reduce it later on, right? But it is virtually black now. It is black, really. Okay, so... Lots of garlic. And you want a lot of pepper. Like I said, usually you would actually have, like, crushed black pepper. I don't have any black pepper. So whoever it was, I think it was Cookie who said uh, a couple of weeks ago that uh, we Asians only use white pepper. There you go. This dish uh, puts pain to that theory, all right? So they do use crushed black pepper in this. Let's throw in the fish. It's got a bit of oil in there as well. And the fish is going to be quite delicate, so just be a little bit careful. And lots of pepper, all right? The version in the restaurant was very, very peppery, and you can like you can actually like I said because it was just crushed pepper. It was coarsely crushed pepper. If every bite you bite into, you can taste the pepper, right? Okay. So again, this fish very delicate. So just be a bit careful. Don't like agitate it too much. And let's pour the sauce back over here. Chinese use more white pepper than black pepper yeah <laughs> yeah I don't know if there's any particular Chinese dishes that use black pepper call for black pepper so I don't have it around here you know okay see there you go guys if ever you come across any uh dish that calls for caramel sauce look at how how intense this color is right so you can in theory make it yourself 
um, but you would want to actually thicken it right with some to put potato starch or something like that at the end that will virtually give you something um, usable that calls for this cooking caramel in case you can't get a hold of it over in um, your part of the world right I think I actually came across this in an online grocery store in the USA so if you look for Cheong Chan, C H E O N G C H A N, cooking caramel. Um, you may be lucky and, and find it right, but failing that, like I said, caramelize your own sugar, um, um, add the saltiness with soy sauce or fish sauce, and then just um, reduce it, add some water and reduce it till it's syrupy, and then thicken it with some potato starch, right? And I will actually cook chickpeas. What's the difference they used to give me cold coffee in Singapore I like it hot when they ordered coffee and tuna sandwich asked it to be hot I was too shy to stop the girl cold coffee cold coffee is entire why are you eating a sandwich in Singapore like <laughs> the difference in pepper um what's the difference um I think black pepper is stronger quite um it's got a different nuance to it in all honesty but yeah we, re we rarely use it in traditional like um Asian cooking so I had to think about it a little bit but it <laughs> that's not enough of a difference to stop me substituting one from the other but black pepper I generally um, imagine it to be stronger flavored okay so you want to actually reduce this till it's like the fish is well coated and I'm gonna taste this black pepper is default white pepper has the hull removed using only the mild center there you go see see a whiskey knows all this stuff I'm gonna, like I said, um, I'm gonna throw a bit of chicken powder in here, right? See, your whiskey, you should be doing your own cooking uh, streams. So as this caramelizes, the fish will firm up. Right, right now, it's very, very delicate, so don't like, don't agitate it too much, right? Just be very gentle. You could have also had like a uh, whole cloves of garlic. I think that would add a nice touch to it, frankly. I read up a lot on food. <laughs> cool. Food and food and tech, just like me. I'm lazy with research, you know, because a lot of the stuff that I bring to the table are what I knew like growing up in an Asian environment, so. But um, in all honesty, a lot of these, um, a lot of people trying to get into food, sometimes they depend too much on Wikipedia, right? Because um, a lot of Asians, if you're starting out on food as a food blogger, and like say you come to, like you, you move overseas to study and then you miss Malaysian food and then you think I'm going to start up my own food blog, right? If you, if you depend too much on Wikipedia, you're going to find that or even on other food blogs, you're gonna find that a lot of the information is misguided, right? Um, yeah, the, so, and they get perpetuated because somebody said something wrong and then everybody else assumes that's fact, right? Because it's in printed form, but yeah, in this democratization of media, where everything online is, uh, anyone can post anything, publish anything, just, yeah. I'm not talking about you, seal whiskey. I'm just talking about people in general. So back it up with like people who are actually at the front lines, right? Someone like me, I actually own a restaurant here in Australia. So what works, what doesn't work is kind of like based around over 20 years of selling <laughs> Malaysian food here in Australia. needs more sweetness to this it's hard to tell because the um, the sauce is very hot I think it's fine 
And it doesn't even need this, right? It's so dark already. So there you go. Okay, and you're gonna find that once this cools down, it's gonna thicken up some more as well. So uh, if, if it's not thickening up, this is actually fine for me, but I've seen recipes that actually tell you to thicken it up with some potato starch or some tapioca starch, right? Um, but I'm not going to need to do this because this is already caramelizing and thickening up really, really well as it is. Okay, so this is just fine. Let's pick this out. Anyone know a good website? Buy spices as affordable, ship to the USA. Amazon, yeah, I would say Amazon, right? Um, you know, there is a website. <laughs> what was it? Mm. Um, Edge of night. If I come across, if I remember what it is, I'll post it on Discord. Um, but I did come across one website in the USA. They specialize in Thai uh, groceries, but they also have like a bunch of other stuff that you can use as well, right? And they ship everywhere in the USA. So they are they are US based. But I'll try and remember what it is and post it on my Discord server, or or I'll give them a shout out. I should charge all these businesses for shout outs. <laughs> Give them a shout out uh, next time I'm, I'm around. Um, I'm gonna put this in. This is almost too big for it, but it's, it'll give a nice con. Amber, how you doing? Okay, so there you go. That's the caramelized fish. Okay. And this is exactly how it looked at the restaurant that I had it at, right? And let's put in some green onion. Am I, am I missing anything for this dish? Did I prepare anything I forgot to put on? Okay. So this is the sour fish stew. Like I said, the color is a little bit cloudier than what I had at the restaurant. I don't have Discord, maybe you can send me a whisper. Okay, yeah, I'll remember it. AliExpress does this, I know. Really? They should sell spices in America. Okay, and this is the, uh, the caramelized fish. Okay, so we got some time. I'm gonna make some sambal, all right? Now this I can do with my eyes closed because it's Malaysian and it's something that I do all, do all the time. Let me just wipe this down. I'm gonna cook the uh, sambal in here. Sambal is just my chili condiment with a balachan shrimp paste. So these are banana chilies. I live about a mile away from an Indian spice shop. Okay, yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so these are giant. I guess you're a little bit more, um, I guess like Asian spice is a little bit more accessible in California than they would be in like say, Arkansas or something like that. Trouble getting to one easily. Yeah, edge of edge of night. You just uh, you just need um, Discord in your browser. Okay, so I buy these bananas because they uh, bananas. These chilies, they're called banana chilies. I buy these because they're cheap. They're like the, today they were four four ninety nine a kilo. Uh, I've seen them for as little as two ninety nine a kilo, but and also because they're a little bit more available than like because like I said I live in this suburb that doesn't really have much by way of Asian like um, groceries and stuff the only Asian grocery store near me is like a tiny little like um, Filipino mini mart actually so Cyan would be happy to hear that but Filipino uh, food um, I don't know whether it's because of its connection to um, Spain and the USA um, Filipino food, despite being in the same part of the world, is just that little bit <laughs> more different to Malaysian um, 
Malaysian slash Indonesian slash um, Thai slash Vietnamese, right? So the ingredients, I, I struggle when I go to a Filipino grocery st store to find what I need, okay? Whereas Cabramatta, which is like in, uh, essentially Vietnamese, um, Cabernet matter, I can find every, pretty much everything I need for Malaysian cooking. Okay, so I'm not going to use all of it. Okay, so this has like virtually no heat at all. This is like virtually like using like bell peppers, right? Um, but I'll add the heat by adding like chili powder to it. So let's move this out of the way. Cryptic peas, we have actual Asian markets in China, in China or can go flea market and one rose veg and stuff, but I don't know what they <laughs> have to ask. Yeah. Whereabouts are you, Cryptic peas? Yes, cities, bigger towns that don't have much trouble finding spices. Huh. i got Filipino friends, so I'm interested. How are they different? Um... <laughs> How are, how's Filipino different from Malaysian? Um, um, see, okay, I, I know very little about Filipino food because they like pork as well, all right? They, they, Filipinos love their pork and I don't eat pork, okay? So that eliminates a lot of uh, my experimentation with Filipino cuisine per se. Um, but one of their most popular dishes is this um, uh, chicken adobo, all right? And the chicken adobo is just basically chicken with soya sauce. <laughs> it's probably not too dissimilar to this caramelized fish, actually. Um, and I think garlic, right? But the flavors are fairly basic. So it's like soya sauce plus sugar. and um, Yeah, I, I, I know they've got their own version of uh, shrimp paste, their own, you know, so, but yeah, the, the, the more, yeah. I don't know if I go into a uh, Filipino shop and can expect to easily find all the like the abalone sauce, the fish sauce, the uh, oyster sauce and all those typical Asian stuff, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. In North Carolina, okay, cool. But yeah, if cyan is still a cyan is in the Philippines. Um, but there, a lot of the time when I do stuff, science, so she's never heard of it, sort of stuff. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna blitz this, and then next I'm gonna blitz some uh, onion. Okay. Let's do this. Babylonian thick soil is not so common in our market. Yeah. Okay. So, so the one thing you've got to remember with banana chilies or possibly with capsicum is that they have a lot more liquid in them, right? So if I pour it out, you can see it. I'm going to start heating it up already, but I'm going to add some pureed onion to it as well. Let's just scrape this in. Yeah, you see a lot of uh, recipes will s tell you to heat up some oil and fry this up and you see the amount of liquid in there. If you did that, this will spit a lot around your cooking area because um, of the water content. So I like to actually fry it without the oil first till a lot of this liquid has evaporated before I add the oil, right? I'm going to blitz one and a half onions probably. So these are very, very large onions, okay? But I would use more if, I, if they weren't so big. There are a lot of different, I reckon, word is races here. I'm probably, well, I'm probably using all types of markets. Yeah, look, um, for the kind of cooking that I do, um, I always tell people look for a grocery store that's actually run by someone from that same part of the world, right? I mean, it sounds obvious, but a lot of people don't really pass the differences among the different races, Asian races, right? 
um, which is why I don't buy into a lot of these, um, you know, people who think they're being racially sensitive, they think Asian is Asian, right? So uh, that annoys me, okay, because it seems a little bit, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that, like, say like a grocery store that's run by a Korean person is likely not going to have a lot of the ingredients that I need for my kind of cooking, right? Because we're both, you know, the same skin color, but culturally we're so different. Our food is so different that um, there's not a lot of similarity there, right? Jackie, I remember I am Fong Te, which is more similar to our chicken adobo. It has vin but ours has vinegar. Yeah, yeah, I am Fong Te, yeah. Uh, I have to see something cooked to go buy in those places. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why you should watch my broadcast. You see, it's hard to pick things up from reading recipes online. But when you see the kind of ingredients I use, after a while, you'll be able to cook like I do. And in all honesty, we Asians don't always get things right either. I mean, I'm like on Facebook all the time seeing other Asians trying to cook certain stuff and they're always asking about ingredients as well, right? Where do you buy this? What do you use for this? And then I'll post something and they'll say, oh, you know, they'll be totally confused about what it is. Because um, sometimes the same ingredients are called different names um, in different parts of the world as well. I want a lot of onion in this because I want it to taste like um because what you're ultimately going to do is actually brown the onions right and that just gives it a really nice like a uh, roasted flavor to your sambal okay let's do this so it's even more amusing when names are swapped across cultures <laughs> who was it? I was Kay who told up some joke that uh, yeah, well, two A uh, like the most common Asian first name and the most common Asian last name combined together gives you the most uncommon name in the world. Uh, Remy will remember this if Remy is around. Um, the most common. So, what's the most co world's most common Asian first name and world's most Oh, not even Asian. World's most common first name plus the world's most common last name combined gives you the most uncommon um, <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah, see, but walk in a place you can't read it. So. I do that too. Look, this is, um, I'll show you an example. Right, this thing here. There's no Chinese, uh, there's no English writing on it at all. Oh, there is actually. Okay, it says government warning. <laughs> government warning in accordance with the Surgeon General, women should not drink alcohol, etc. Okay, but this, like the label here and all this, this is all in Chinese. This is actually glutinous rice wine, right? And I only know of this because of my stepmom. Uh, I speak Chinese, but I don't read or write it, right? So, um, so sometimes we struggle with what to buy as well. We go buy... Um, um, yeah, we go, we pick them up visually, sort of thing. Cookie, I've learned on some Facebook not to help on any questions. We begin it because some s smart A will often chime in that two totally different are interchangeable. Yeah. Judge by looks are used image recognition apps. Ah, well, there you go. Image recognition translation. <laughs> cookie <laughs> yeah you and me are uh, cookie and i are quite similar i think we're a little bit cynical of uh <laughs> anyway okay so onion and onion brown onion also has a lot of moisture in it all right so um i do uh, for that reason as well i don't add the oil right away uh in malaysia growing up we used in all honesty um shallots those smaller red like shallots more right and they have less moisture in them all right so that's it makes it less of a concern about the oil spitting and all that but because i use onion like this um i like to dry fry it first and then add the oil and what i want to um, add a lot more heat to this so i'm gonna get some chili powder
Okay, again, chili powder, there are a lot of different varieties, right? This one is from Thailand. This, uh, I bought this uh, um, labeled as chili crush. Um, so let's throw it in. But generally, anything that's chili related and it's from Thailand or Indonesia tends to be a lot, um, has a, tend to have a lot more heat in it than something from Malaysia for whatever reason. We're putting the vegetable. Malaysian, you know white person telling me I'm wrong about Malaysian ingredients. <laughs> and I'm back. Hey, the soup looks different. It does. Yeah, it's more cloudy, but it's really nice, right? Flavor wise, it's really nice. This is actually, uh, I'm doing a sambal now. Um, we're putting the vegetable mix in the pudding cloth and squeezing out the water first. Would that affect the flavor? I used to do that. Um, um, let's see. You saw that bag of rice I had earlier here? Oh no, a little bit different. But I used to buy these 25 kilo bags of rice from my restaurant, right? And they're basically like uh, weaved bags, right? Uh, plastic weaves. And then what I used to do when I blended the onion, I would have these bags suspended with large clamps over these big giant uh, drums um, in the cool room. And then I would pour the onion puree into these bags and then the uh, juice would drip into the drum, right? And then I would use the onion to fry up to, uh, for all kinds of different recipes for my sambals and all that and my curry paste and all that, right? And then the juice I would then use as a marinade for like things like satay and all that. I see that explains the difference. <laughs> it raises your eyes. I here where I'm at, Jackie would be considered, where I'm at, Jackie would be considered white. <laughs> I'm yellow. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm yellow skinned. <laughs> right, I'm going to add more chili to it because I've got a feeling this is really, really super mild. Okay. But yeah, when we Malaysians like move overseas, like I saw like recently on a Malaysian in Sydney Facebook group, they were asking about chilies, about dried chilies, right? Where they can buy ones that are, um, this is from an Indian girl um, from Malaysia. Like I say, Malaysia has three predominant, three dominant cultures, the Indian, Chinese, and the Malays. And this is a Malaysian Indian girl who's moved to Sydney. And she said all the chilies she's tried that she's bought at Asian grocery stores have just been completely like radioactively spicy, hot, right? Um, and she wanted to know where she can buy, you know, ones from Malaysia. But it just goes to show even among us Asians, we, uh, you know, our palates are a little bit different. So like I said, generally I tend to find anything from Thailand that's chili related to be super, super hot. Um, and also when I eat out at Indonesian restaurants over here in Sydney, their sambal tends to be super, super hot. So for whatever reason, um, they, they must have a higher tolerance level of, uh, chili than we do. <laughs> How does the rest of yellow go? Yellow, um, the difference between being tan and genetics. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in Chinese living in Australian skin. Yeah, skin burns turn into <laughs> Marge Simpson, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> in part, not Carolina, I'm, I'm at your oh, Virginia. Yeah, well, it won't affect it negatively, not noticeably anyway. <laughs> what song? What are we talking about? <laughs> okay, so you can hear the... It, it, this isn't sizzling anymore, so you, you know that the, uh, the moisture has been reduced. I'm just going to just taste test this slightly. I'm going to add all the seasoning afterwards, right? Okay, this is hot now, right? <laughs> I think I might have gone a little bit carried away. But yeah, that's the, the, the hot, dry chili. That's kind of like essentially how I cheat by buying a really, really cheap type of pepper, like the big giant banana. Because the Asian ones can cost like, you know, this time of the year they can cost $20 a kilo, all right? I bought these big giant banana ones, which are $5 a kilo, four ninety nine a kilo. Um, but yeah, I cheat by adding the heat through the use of... Uh, chili powder. Okay, now 
now let's add the oil. Okay. I love ghost pepper extract. Oh, uh, you can buy it as an extract. <clears throat> See, to me, like just the thought of ghost pepper kind of like makes me a little bit worried. <laughs> I can't take heat the way the uh, the Indonesians and the Thai do, right? And I know Americans like their super super hot hot sauces and whatever. And yeah, I'm, I'm I like I like to be able to taste the food, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> Yellow is a song by one of those my mildly famous bands. I've never heard of it. How does it go? A little bit goes a long way. Okay, yeah, you could probably in that case you could probably yeah stick a bit of like ghost pepper extract in it. My birth cert was messed up. I had no race. I can't get no put a race on anything. Driver's license. So what what race are you then? Cryptic piece. The plants have varying degrees of spice in them. Produces nuclear hot. The other is tolerant. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember every time my mom, you know how I do the stuffed eggplant a lot, like our favorite actually, I mean, apart from eggplant is stuffed chilies. Um, so we would buy those last Chinese chilies and you can never tell one batch to the next, you know, whether this is going to be too hot for you or whether it's going to be too mild. So it's a bit of a guessing game, even among us Asians, right? So I've put in the oil, I might need more oil in this. Because you want to actually um, have a finished product that has a nice sheen of oil across the top, right? This is something that you would eat with like, uh, you know, as a condiment on the side. You're white on this mom. <laughs> right, okay, cool. It's interesting here in Australia, I don't know if you get it in the USA, but in Australia, anything official that you have to fill out, whether it's an application for like to get into, to enroll your kid in school or whether it's an application for, you know, some, you know, a driver's license or whatever. One question they have in everything is, are you of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander descent? Or do you have any kind of like, basically, I think, I guess you get like special concessions if you're an Aborigine here in Australia, which, yeah. But uh, in Malaysia, yeah, like I said, there's like the, the, the weirdest thing as well. Uh, so recent incident in Malaysia, and I mentioned this on a previous stream, was that uh, in Malaysia, cable TV, has a, the largest cable TV provider is called Astro, right? And remember how I say Malaysia has like three predominant races and there are a lot of stereotypes around like races, right? And... Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, stereotypes work to an extent, but unfortunately, when they are applied as a rule, they don't work, right? So what happens is that the stereotype in Malaysia is that generally they think the Chinese are all about money and greedy and all that sort of stuff. The stereotype about the Malays are that they're, you know, lackadaisical, they don't work very hard. The stereotype about Indi Indians is that you can't trust them, all right? <laughs> so these are all negative stereotypes about the races. But essentially, this company, like say uh, Astro Cable Service Provider, is that they take their stereotype um, um, to the next level. Where if you apply for a cable TV account and your name indicates that you're of Indian descent, they won't allow you to um, uh, pay by credit card. They insist that you uh, have to prepay or pay by direct debit or something like that, right? So that got a little bit tricky because this woman um, who is actually half Chinese and half Indian, but born in Malaysia, um, she had an Indian last name and apparently they refused to give her essentially what is a line of credit because they say you have to prepay because your name, right? And yeah, she posted it on Facebook. She was really annoyed about it, but isn't that fascinating? <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's kind of like ballsy for a company, for a big company like that, you know, to, to, to just blatantly <laughs> apply that rule on the basis of your name. <laughs> Ethnicity is as it's optional and almost all, oh, okay, right, right, okay. I'm 50, it was different back then, probably would be caught these days. Okay, but you're on my age. <laughs> Bit of song earlier was why that earlier message sounded kind of creepy. Let me. I, I, I did I miss it? The original blood question is really important. There's so many cultural things like Aboriginals do not mention the dead, nor do they like to view the dead. Is that right? I did not know that. Oh, I, I did not know that. I know very little about Aboriginal culture. 
Okay, let me hi links. Let me look at your. <laughs> what did you write? Your skin or oh, yeah, your skin uh, turned to something. <laughs> okay, yeah, you lost me there. That's a very child in your in your class world. In your class, wouldn't be able to watch a documentary on my. Is that right? I did not know that. Right. Yeah. How interesting. See, I came to Australia as a virtual adult. You see, um, so I don't. I'm a little bit tone deaf when it comes to cultural like sensitivities and all that sort of stuff, right? <laughs> I'm very politically incorrect, guys. So I say things that uh, might offend some people. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna throw in some chicken powder. You know me. Okay, but you can leave this out, right? Nobody else does this. Okay, it's just a Jackie M thing. Chicken powder. And I'm going to put in shrimp paste, okay? This is shrimp paste. Um, this is in powdered form. What we call belacan in Malaysia, what they call trasi in Indonesia. You can get shrimp paste in a mousse form in um, Thailand as well. So you can find Thai shrimp paste in a jar and you'll just scoop it out and add it to this, right? In Mal uh, the Malaysian shrimp paste usually comes in a block and then what you have to do is cut it into thin slices and then you toast it or you... Uh, uh, pan fry it till it crumbles into this form all right in a powdered form this again is one of my shortcuts that I, I, I just buy it already done up for me so I don't have to worry about it okay so some shrimp paste in here and I'm gonna put a bit of sugar in here as well I want to fry this a little, quite a lot longer all right because I want to actually there's no way near done yet I want I don't want to just um, uh, soften the onions I don't want to just caramelize the onion I want to back practically get it to the point where it's roasted all right so that you can see it's like uh, nice and toasty classic Jackie you're really Australian you know <laughs> you think <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I'm really Australian <laughs> okay so sugar all right so you just want a bit of sugar just to cut through uh, the, the savory flavors here <laughs> I don't know, like depending on Australian, like uh, Sydney ciders on my Facebook page are very, very different uh, mentally to me, all right? I guess I come from, uh, yeah, if you, if, you, if you grew up the way I grew up, you would be a little bit looser with your tongue, right? Because nowadays in this age of, day and age of political correctness, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I want fish sauce. But you can use soya sauce. My mom uses soya sauce for this, right? But I say things about races that um, that some white people take umbrage at because they think that I'm, a, uh, I'm perpetuating racial stereotypes, right? And then I'll come back and say, hey, you realize I'm, an, I'm a minority, so I can't say this sort of stuff. You don't know my, you know. So <laughs> I get in trouble sometimes when I say things about, yeah, about races because like there are certain, certain white people who feel like it's their duty to kind of like correct past injustices or perceived injustices and whatever, right? Um, <clears throat> but like uh, I posted something about this uh, article about these minorities working at Google who felt um, that they had to that they were kind of like excluded right and the basically the the, the basically the the key example they used in that article was how this Asian girl um, got so offended by this white colleague who made a joke about Asians and maths that she said she emotionally she emotionally shut down and then she ended up leaving Google. So I basically said, look, come on. <laughs> and then white people and then white people got upset with me and say, oh look, you know, you know, it's all about exclusion, you know, it's not, you know, this may sound trivial to you, but you don't understand. I was thinking, no, I do understand. I am Asian, you know. I, I I've lived in three continents in each setting that I've uh, grown up in, I have been a minority. So I've been I've been a minority for fifty years, right? So I know what it's like on three on three different continents, right? And I have in fact worked in tech for eight years of my life, and I know about like you know 
uh, work environments that are dominated by white men, right? But there's no, if there's no malice intended by, by, by things like this, right? Why, 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 why seek it out, you know? So that frustrates me a little bit. Put a correctness up that you don't have enough friends in New Zealand. We all just make some real crass comments. <laughs> yeah, but that's because, like, um, you know, <laughs> white people are fair game, you see, my friend's brother brings him hot bread from Australia, he gave us some, I can't spell any, but that stuff is good, on chicken you ever eat, hogs, hog bread, what is that, I don't know, who knows what hog bread is, do you know why Asians do not swim, talking about Bali, Jawa, Macasia, I don't get it, Asians do not swim, talking about Bali, Jawa, Malaysia. Do you, is, is that meant to be a joke or? <laughs> Malaysians are minorities in Malaysia. See, Malaysians are like comprised of like, like I said, a number of different races. So uh, Chinese, of which I am one, are a minority race in Malaysia, right? So um, the country is essentially predominantly Malay and they have policies in place that are what you would actually refer to as affirmative action in the West, but what the Chinese um, see as discrimination, right? So um, I could do much better in my school exams than my Malay friend, but they would get all the perks, they would get the university acceptance, and the Chinese will be kind of like, not. <laughs> That's why you find like uh, uh, a lot of overseas Chinese from Malaysia living overseas, you see? It's a spice mix. They don't go to the beach. Uh, they don't go to the beach. Oh, okay. Asians know. It's a real crappy and overpriced pub. All oh, right. Prop food chain. Okay. Line line. Thanks for following. I have learned that people just want to argue. I don't pay none of no attention to have peace. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You don't count as Malay. No, I'm not Malay. Yeah, I'm not Malay. I'm Chinese. Yeah, it's very confusing because Malaysia is the name of the country, but Malaysian is not a an, a race, right? So uh, there are Chinese Malay, uh, there are Chinese Malaysians, there are Indian Malaysians, there are Malay Malaysians, right? But people, when I say I'm Malaysian, they automatically assume I'm Malay. No. Um, yeah, I'm Chinese Malaysian. Assuming I found the right thing while I search engines, never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, never. I I I I thought Hulk's breath was a chain as well, actually. Yeah, in Malaysia, if you're Malay, if you buy a property in Malaysia, if you're Malay, a lot of these properties, they automatically give you a 5% or 10% discount, 5% discount. It's actually advertised, right? You might see a uh, new apartment block uh, at this place, whatever, Bumi Putra is what they call the Malays, like the sons of the soil, 5% um, um, cheaper or something like that. So there are all these like, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's touted as like, uh, uh, affirmative action because they felt that uh, the country when they when it became independent from the U from the Brits 50 years ago they felt that they needed to be able to pull up some of the disadvantaged groups and they felt that the Chinese were too dominant the Indians might be too dominant or whatever they had to help the Malays which I say like I say stereotypically Malays are assumed to be very lackadaisical don't have much of a drive to succeed sort of thing so they get crowded out of the um, economy, therefore the government has to give them a helping hand, so 50 years later they're still getting these helping hands, essentially what are government handouts, right? So, yeah. How oh, no, make me rice noodles like your eyes. <coughs> that makes sense. <coughs> <laughs> are you going to make Bahasa channel for any reason the bloggers rapidly get lots of subscribers? Why? Bahasa, really? What, on Twitch? Bahasa channel. Are you talking about Twitch or? Uh, 
something else. You know what though, uh, Malaysians are a lot embrace um, like social media and they embrace uh, new stuff a lot more optimistically, a lot more um, with a lot more uh, enthusiasm than Australians do. Like most of my friends from Malaysia on social media, they're posting like ten times a day, and they've got like five thousand friends like right at the threshold. Whereas the Aussies will be like, yeah, whatever sort of thing. I don't mean it. <laughs> That's cool. I'm trying to figure out what you were saying. <laughs> okay, we're gonna taste it. This is actually quite spicy. I think I should have uh, held back just a little bit on the chili, but it'll be it should be all right once you use it as a condiment, like I said, because you're not gonna be eating spoonfuls of it. You're just gonna like get a tiny little bit. Xbox, what did you post? <laughs> if you want to post a link, um, send it to me as a whisper and I'll share it. Okay, it needs more um, chicken powder. More fish sauce. Should I time out? What did they paste, you know? Uh, no need to time out, but uh, <laughs> I, I just don't know what they pasted. They may have, uh, they, <laughs> they may have like, um, you know, innocently posted some link that they, they wanted us to see, but they're Indonesian channels for locals. Ah, yeah, ah, Ole, I, I, I'm, I'm really bad at promoting myself, but I actually have my own, um, not my own, but I'm a co-founder of a startup um, called Teep TV, T E E B dot TV. Let me just, uh, no, Teep TV dot com. This shows how bad I am. Okay. And it is actually an Indonesian, um, Teep TV dot com. It is actually an inter, uh, shoot. Let me just post it here. <laughs> Remisia, I'm safe. <laughs> okay, teeptv.com and Sammy's here too. <laughs> Come down, down, down to the. <laughs> okay, cool. Hi, Links is <laughs> Hi Links is a very insecure mod. <laughs> but yeah, Teep TV is my, uh, a startup that I co-founded, right? And it is. It is actually a streaming service of um, uh, basically all kinds of videos, but targeted at the Indonesian, Malaysian, Southeast Asian market. A lot of the content is actually Indonesian. So it's described as the um, Netflix of indie television in Southeast Asia, right? But um, to be fair, not all the content not all the content is indie content. It's got a lot of like sports and that sort of stuff as well. So I'm actually a co-founder of that, and my focus is actually in um, obtaining content for that uh, platform. So you know, whatever you see me do here, I actually do a lot of stuff elsewhere, which I space off on promoting because I'm so busy. So my look away. <laughs> More more purely so I can post things. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so there you go, Oleg. Um, yeah, Tip TV is quite new, but uh, we've got basically negotiations in place. We've got partners in place in Indonesia. So, um, and the, funnily enough, the most popular content on our channel are paranormal content. So all these, anything like that you post, uh, that's very clickbaity. I like, so, oh my god, what did this guy see? You know, a shocking thing that this guy saw and whatever. All the Asians like still fall for that kind of clickbait. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, what is your target audience? Are we all poor? <laughs> um, the target audience is basically Indonesian, but funnily enough, our biggest audience actually, the, the, the biggest audience share actually come from of all places, the USA. So I don't know if it's because there are a lot of Indonesians in the USA who like watching our content. We actually also have 
you know, our content is not restricted to Indonesian content. It's like, you know, like I said, a lot the content that I pull in from all of, uh, from all over the world. So I've got sitcoms from the USA, you know, I've got um, uh, Bollywood like news from India and I've got uh, celebrity scene news from uh, the UK. Well, produced in the UK, but about Hollywood and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of random content and I've got MMA sports. I've got like uh, some other extreme sports in there. So all those contents are, uh, I've got actually this Swedish guy who makes uh, indie horror films. He's got uh, some of his content on our platform. So my partners, basically they will and deal to get, um, the content push out through Indonesia, Malaysia, and all those places through content sharing with our partners overseas, right? There's a, there's a YouTube, an Indonesian version of YouTube called video, vidio.com. Um, and some of the content, we have our own channel on video, which is basically like content from our, our platform over there, right? So, what you see at tiptv.com is just basically the surface of what we do. There's a lot of, like I said, we have a lot of negotiations in place. We've got uh, negotiations in place, contracts signed with like say Samsung TV, uh, where they want to put our app on their new generation television so that, you know, anyone who owns a Samsung TV that's internet connected can go to the Tip TV app and watch our shows there. So there's a lot of stuff happening in the background. Soybean, how you doing? What's with the bees? <laughs> uh, five recipes that make you number three will shock you. Yeah, <laughs> that sort of stuff. <laughs> I know. People in the yes just like food that's why we're around. <laughs> I'm a student living with parents, so I think I kind of count as poor. What's she cooking? Um, right now I'm making a sambal. The uh, which is a a chili condiment. Right, so earlier I made this uh, sour fish stew, which is actually, it, it tastes so nice, I feel like eating it now. And then also I made this um, caramelized fish, right? And I'm quite impressed with how dark the caramelization um, turned out, right? I did a better job caramelizing that sugar than all these, uh, all these recipes I saw online. <laughs> Cryptic peas, hey. Like thought, Oleg, who the <laughs> what did you post, Oleg? <laughs> I've been a really long, <laughs> long and tiring weekend. All oh, right, what did you do? All my weekends are fairly relaxing. I checked tape, looks cool. Yeah, look, they, uh, we're working on redesigning the layout of the website. Do you know what Bitter Melon is? Yeah, 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 Bitter Melon. I'm not a huge fan of it, to be honest. Um, it, uh, bitter Melon as in Bitter Gourd, is that what, is that what you mean? Bitter Gourd is, uh, to me, it's a little bit of an acquired taste, but um, I'm not a huge fan of it, but usually the more traditional... Asians or Chinese like to eat it. How I get the taste there. He, he posted your site. Oh, is that right? <laughs> oh, bitter melon. Bitter, bitter gourd is an Asian thing. It's a vegetable. Friend from the States I hadn't seen in person when he came for a visit this weekend. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Eat ice cream. Ice cream solves everything. <laughs> did you did you eat it by accident or something like that or uh, bitter melon is a drink here really let me see if bitter melon is the same as bitter gourd all right bitter gourd is what i know Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. But bitter melon, you know, you saw me do the stuffed uh, eggplant and whatever. They do actually stuff bitter gourd as well. And I, I don't like it. Um, so basically fish paste, right? Um, and then the bitter gourd, they'll cut it into slices. So they look like rings because it's empty. It's, it, it's um, 
yeah, it's basically like a ring, right? And then they stuff it with the fish paste just gently so that you end up with a ring with fish paste in the middle. And then they cook it up. But if you if you braise it the way I sometimes do with the stuffed eggplant, if you braise it together with the eggplant, everything will taste bitter, right? So I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, stuffed bitter melon. Uh, <laughs> my husband's diabetic. He can't eat ice cream. It's supposed to be great to take diabetics. Is that right? Really? Huh. The Asian fruits. Have you ever tried to make pulled jackfruit? What's pulled jackfruit? So your your husband eats uh eats bitter gourd for diabetes. It's definitely not. It's definitely a quiet taste. Yeah, look. Um. Yeah, <laughs> it is an acquired taste. I, I I consider myself very Asian, but I guess it's one of those things that I just never really um, got into. Um, but you know, if I were you, I would I would braise it with like garlic and oyster sauce and simmer it, and then it's it's not bad. It's not like strong, 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 strong. But you it's just got that little yeah tingly bitterness to it that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. This looks perfect. I'm just going to throw it in a jar. If I can find a jar. I swear to God, it will show up as soon as I uh, go away. The restaurant, this gas tank lasts long. It lasts about an hour, hour and a half. Jackfruit can be barbecued. It tastes kind of like pulled pork. Oh, thanks, fitness food. Thanks, Trisha. By the way, guys, uh, everyone knows Trisha from Fitness Food. Um, if you don't, you should follow her because she does. She live streams much, much, much longer than I do, and <laughs> she does all this healthy food. Unlike me, not that there's anything fundamentally unhealthy about what I do, but yeah, make sure you follow Fitness Food, right? Twitch.tv/fitnessfood. If you're watching elsewhere, uh, mess with Trisha and me, mess you up. I know you will. <laughs> Foodie army, very cool. Do you know Mark Weens? And it got I have collaborated with Mark Weens before. Yeah, I do, Oleg. How funny is that? You should mention him. Um, back in the day when I was live streaming with Google on Google Hangouts on air, I actually um, did a, a cook along with him. I taught him how to cook one of my dishes and he followed along over in Thailand. For those of you who don't know Mark Weens, he's a travel blogger essentially. He's American married to a Thai woman and he does um, he, he does a lot of like these budget travel things sort of thing and he produces a lot of ebooks and uh and I, I kind of assumed that being a travel blogger who doesn't come from a food background that um, abaddon thanks for following i kind of assumed that mark weens would be your typical travel blogger who doesn't know how to cook but surprisingly he's actually a pretty damn cook cool. so small world and i actually contacted him about a few months ago about my tip TV, right? Uh, for those of you who don't know, like I said, I am a co-founder of a TV, um, online TV platform based in Indonesia called tip TV. And I actually contacted Mark Weens about uh, possibly doing a TV show, right? Because I, I, I do a bit of television and I was talking, uh, one thing that we do with tip TV, like apart from like just the portal that has all these videos, is that we try and push our content out to traditional media as well as other online media. So I was in negotiations with a TV network in Malaysia and they were interested in producing these short little vignettes, right? Uh, like two, three minute like uh, clips that they can insert in between their regular programming. So I actually talked to Mark Weens, Ice Pals, thanks for following. I talked to Mark Weens about it and then he, um, he got back to me and then he didn't get back to me and I just spaced it off. So small world. <laughs> 
I've seen his YouTube videos. I know, right? Matt means a food ranger and strictly dumb. <laughs> I have never seen those. <laughs> I feel like they're... no one's messing with me. <laughs> yeah, everybody, see, everybody loves Matt Wins. How funny is that? That's crazy. Yeah, he's a, he's a very, like, kind of like, just a very chill guy, American, like, backpacker type sort of stuff and uh, like I said he must be in huge demand now but like a few years ago I did collaborate with him just like on a live video uh, via Google Hangouts on air so it's a fairly small world um, <laughs> how funny is that and yeah uh, uh, Trisha I don't know if you saw my video I uh, my video my uh, my draft of your um, post on the Huffington Post by the way guys uh, don't forget to check out my Huffington Post cha um, channel my Huffington uh, Post uh, write-up right the latest write-up is at bits.ly slash huffpo jackie all lowercase uh, the, the current lot write-up is about yours truly but uh, I've got Trisha lined up that I'm going to actually feature on the Huffington Post about what she does on Twitch so that's something for you to check out um, it's I'm just waiting for one more answer to a question I sent to Trisha last week, so, but otherwise it's ready to go. Um, I think I knew him when he went by Rena. Oh, come on. <laughs> You're thinking Anthony Rena. Uh, those other two do videos like Mark. Which other two? Um, so Jackie is a former restaurant. what expenses go in opening a food place like a cafe, say? Oh look, expenses. You don't even want to know. It's crazy. Don't ever, don't ever be uh, drawn into opening up your own uh, restaurant or cafe. All right, it's not worth it. It's cheaper to just actually work for someone else. Oh. <laughs> <It's> it. <laughs> but <clears throat> look, when I started out doing Malaysian food, I actually cooked from home. Uh, I actually had a bit, uh, kind of like stuck out like a big extension out the back and kind of like did my cooking outdoors because a lot of my cooking like I sell food outdoors right so I did my prep outdoors um, and then uh, when I got too big for that I moved into these premises for a restaurant that had shut down because they ran out of money and um, there's the rent first of all <coughs> um, and also there's all these charges like council rates and um, it's just crazy um, garbage collection uh, all kinds of taxes that come to it but the uh, insurances um, but and uh, basically general upkeep of these different licenses make sure your staff are fully trained and have all the certifications you need uh, the food um, you know inspections um, but um, the one of the biggest costs apart from the rent and all that because that's thousands of dollars I was paying like Oh, I don't know about eight thousand dollars a month, you know, for rent. When you include all the other stuff, so six eight thousand dollars a month. Once you include all the other stuff um, associated with maintaining a physical building, right? Um, but staffing are just a killer. All right, if you do what I do and actually pay people an honest uh, rate, right? I know a lot of like, I hate to say it, a lot of Asian restaurants pay under the table and they undercut everybody and you know it just kind of like has a trickle down effect on the rest of like how everything works right because you know either these people are working illegally or they are claiming illegally as in like you know they don't have the right visa or whatever to work so they're happy to get 10 bucks an hour or whatever uh, whereas i'm paying like 20 bucks an hour right so my food costs go up because of that so people have to pay more for my food and then they'll complain about why my food costs more than like somebody else is who does the same thing and that's because they pay them under the table or these people are on government benefits right so they might be uh, whatever you know they might be claiming government benefits and then working under the table so but I never did that all right you can talk to all my staff in all the years I've run a food business um, I've fired people I've had like <laughs> tear down like yelling matches with people I've reported some to the police and all that sort of stuff but you will never find one person if they're honest uh, tell you anything bad about me as far as um, you know screwing them on wages essentially right so I was always very very honest in that regard but it essentially means that I was poor as a <laughs> poor as a church mouse for as long as I had my restaurant <laughs> uh, 
Oh, she watches it after the cough. She probably went Asians, you know. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> you know, why should I wash my hands? This is my own food. I'm eating here. I'm not selling it to you, you dumbass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do I time her out? Nah, that's all right. Do you have a restaurant now? No, I don't. And you know why I don't have a restaurant? Because I have a, uh, a child. I gave birth to a child uh, five years ago who spent seven plus months in the hospital and uh, were very sick, nearly died three times. I was being called up in the middle of the night a few times over that period. Um, there was a lot of pressure for me to actually withdraw treatment for him. He had th uh, two open heart surgeries, had a bowel surgery, um, all kinds of stuff. So uh, in that period, I was spending like on average five hours a day in the hospital with him. So I was delegating a lot of stuff in my restaurant to my staff and it ended up that things kind of like went pear-shaped. Um, and then when he came out of hospital, it uh, coincided with this really brutal email I got from someone who ate at my restaurant and thought that, you know, she had a bad experience sort of thing. So, um, so I wrote a blog post and published it and told people, look, from now on, I understand that you feel like the standards are slipping. You think I'm overrated and whatever. And, but from now on, if I can't even be at the restaurant physically, I won't even open for the day. All right. That's the kind of hard line I was looking to take uh, moving forward. And then the day after I published that post, two guys walked into my restaurant and offered me a bunch of money to vacate and they would take it over. So I did. So that's the uh, short <laughs> condensed version of everything. And then like I figured, okay, I'll move out, but I'll still be able to run market stores because even before the restaurant, I used to sell food at farmer's markets, you know, selling Malaysian food at those places. And I will bring my sick child that just come out of hospital along with me. And then of course that didn't really work out as well because, um, uh, Australia being Australia, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yeah, Australia, Australia being Australia, like, um, you know, I, I, I presented it as a cultural issue, but when I was selling food at different markets and I had my, um, <laughs> and I had my disabled child in a cot at the back, right? I started getting people complaining about him being around sort of thing. They were thinking, oh, why isn't he in childcare, you know, sort of thing. Why do you have to work and why shouldn't you be at home looking after him? And in fact, I do actually, you know, it's just me and him at home. It's not like I uh, <laughs> outsource him or whatever, you know, and I don't care about him. Um, so ultimately, long story short, about a year and a half ago, this thing blew up in the whole, uh, in media in Australia, where uh, essentially what happened was at the one particular market I had been trading at for 14 years, um, some guy went around trying to collect signatures to get my son removed from the market. And I didn't know about it. He was doing it behind my back, right? And then I got a phone call telling me there was what I could expect, that I could probably get reported for child endangerment or whatever, or child abuse, child neglect, or something like that. And, you know, um, basically, essentially, the implication is you should consider leaving that market. So I did, right? And I posted on social media and uh, <laughs> and it blew up in the media because the uh, uh, TV crew started showing up <laughs> and, and, and covering the story. And because my child is disabled, right? People took umbrage to the whole thing because they saw it as discrimination against, uh, you know, people with special needs, right? There's a, there's a lot more nuance than that, in my opinion. Like I said, I think people were doing because they're doing it, not because they felt that he was, you know, He's, he doesn't have a confronting disability, right? He, he, he looks very helpless. And I say, look, it's not that people think that he looks ugly and he should be locked away and we don't want to see him out in public, which is how a lot of the hardline like disability advocates people saw it, right? Because a lot of these disability advocate people grew up with family members who were basically discriminated against because of their disability, all right? They're more, I guess, more confronting disability. Right. So they saw me as kind of like the beacon as uh, someone who really should stand and fight. So it became a big, big, big thing that drew out a long time. Uh, <laughs> but long story short, I now only trade one day a week at one market and I sell essentially just one dish, which is my fried noodle dish. Right. Um, that just kind of helps pay the bills. But the rest of the time I create content, I work with brands and that sort of stuff. So Noah builds an ark. <laughs> Noah's good guy. Fair <laughs> uh, um, It's definitely against discrimination laws, not letting him stay. 
Well, you know, it's a privately run market, you know, like I said, it got really, really messy because the person who called me up from the market was an employee of the market. She said, I just wanted to, you know, this guy's been collecting signatures and for the record, by the way, you know, he wants to remain anonymous. So I can't tell you who he is. I can't tell you his motivation. Um, but for the record, like uh, your fellow stallholders around your store, they have decided to support that petition because they felt that Noah's presence at the market was affecting their ability to trade. Right. I was thinking, what the hell does that mean? First of all, how is his presence affecting their ability to trade? And second of all, some of these people around me I've worked with for like over a decade. I was thinking this is really cruel, right? Um, but you know, like I said, when I was trading, um, every now and then I'd get like a disapproving look from a member of the public. But I think I kind of figured that these storeholders were like my colleagues, right? Essentially, so I was pretty. Um, annoyed about that <laughs> um, which, and also I felt that if I didn't even have the support of my fellow storeholders I've got no leg to stand on right um, so that's why I decided to pull, uh, pull the plug and kind of like announce on social media hey guys I'm quitting this market and after 14 years and this is why right and like I said you know I started getting phone calls from the media and then the owners of the market when they started um, you know then there was a movement uh, by the public who was so outraged by it there was a movement by the public to boycott the market right <laughs> so the owners of the market who happened to be overseas at the time they started panicking okay so they threatened lawsuits they um, reached out to they start first of all they started defending themselves in a really bad way by saying by essentially blaming their employee for telling me about what was going on. They said their employee did the wrong thing, you know, she shouldn't have done it, she was inexperienced, she should have kept this all internal, like we would have just tossed out the petition and whatever. And, and of course it got the uh, public even more outraged. They said they're trying, they're an employee on the bus and all that sort of stuff. Uh, they said they didn't, didn't they? What are you doing now? So cool. Oh, thanks. Oh, they got boycotted. I know, like I said, you know, they were so worried about boycott that the owner of the market told me I had to actually respond because the, the Facebook wall was getting inundated by people telling them they were disgusting, they were sick of them, they were, they were coming back and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> so they reached out to me and said, Jackie, you have to respond to all these. Okay, so I was staying up till 3 a.m. That was a really, really intense time, right? I was staying up till 3 a.m. responding to all these people saying, look, um, you know, it's not the organizers of the market, it was their employee who told me and like you know, the market itself has always been very supportive um, and all that. So, and the funny thing was that when I actually did show up at the market, that what was to be the final day, right, the initial final day of my uh, market trading, and I finally uh, built up the guts to talk to these uh, fellow stallholders that supposedly was supporting this petition, they were saying we didn't know anything about it. What petition? Nobody ever talked to us. So somebody somewhere is lying, all right? So it may be that, yeah, yeah, yeah who knows what's going on. But essentially they said, oh, we're 100% behind you. We don't have a problem with Noah, you know, we, and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, but yeah, the market organizers said, look, Jackie, you know, 150 market storeholders livelihoods are on the line because of this. So you need to fix this. Okay, <laughs> so they put it back on me as though it was my fault. So I, uh, yeah, so it was very intense and they were like, like I said, like the media were being threatened with lawsuits. So some of the media withdrew their, uh, withdrew, withdrew the, sto the story, okay, because they didn't want to be accused of defaming the market and whatever. But um, it showed up on the front page of the Daily Mail, right? The Daily Mail, if you guys know the website, it tends to be a little bit sensationalist. So they had like this blaring headline kind of like a single mom forced out of market because of down syndrome son which essentially was what happened but it sounded so um clickbaity that um and i was really quite shocked that was my first time dealing with uh because i've been featured in I, i've been on tele television right I, I do a bunch of tv shows in australia as a cook and i have been featured profiled and whatever as whatever you know as a cook but it was the first time i had been featured in a non food related story and I was shocked at the vitriol I was getting from um, people who commented on the story they were saying ah oh, this is BS you know she's making it up she's after her you know uh, she you know this can't possibly happen in Australia and some people were saying oh you know she's just after publicity you know this all made up story and um, 
that or oh, why does she feel entitled to bring her kid to you know to work with her i don't get to bring my kid to work with me and all that kind of stuff just really really nasty stuff you know so <laughs> i actually started responding to the um, comments on the daily mail website but all comments have to be vetted you know by a moderator and the moderator did not post any of my responses, which made me really, really annoyed because all these trolls, I was getting trolled and I couldn't actually respond to them. But then I went on to the uh, news.com.au like, uh, you know, story because everybody shared it. It was everywhere, I promise you. Like you can name it, it was <laughs> there. Everybody covered the story. Uh, the Daily Mail, uh, sorry, no, news.com.au, they shared the story on their Facebook and again I was getting attacked left, right and center, of people accusing me of lying and making it up and whatever crap, right? Um, so I was responding there sort of thing, so that went through. But like after a while I thought, no, this is crazy, I'm spending like, I'm losing sleep just responding to people who are attacking me, who don't even know me, right? So in the end I just said, done, you know, they can say whatever. Basically, essentially, I, I, I told this guy that I know, right, who's known me for a few years, he said, look, why do you worry about them, you know? You know that's not who you are. The people who know you, the people who matter, know that's not who you are. So just ignore them. So that was then I decided I'm just going to ignore them. <laughs> but that's kind of like a development of like your own, like, I guess, um, it's, uh, you know, it's an evolution of your... Um, of your character as well as character building. So nowadays, when I see people get really upset on Facebook, say, "Oh my God, I can't believe this person is again." Chill, who cares? Nobody cares, you know. Just forget about it. So I'm kind of like that now, just based on that kind of experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. Whether she was the liar, I don't know. The funny thing is, she said very, very distinct things, right? To me, she said, like I said, oh, you know. Uh, she said that uh, the storeholders around you feel that uh, Noah's presence at the market is affecting their ability to trade. So that was very specific um, of uh, phraseology. Another thing was I asked her in response to that, I said, who are these storeholders? Because these were my friends, right? If they have the gall to sign a petition demanding that my son, son gets removed, then at least tell me who they are so I can talk to them. And she said, look, I can't tell you who they are. They all want to remain anonymous. But you know how it is, Jackie. She said, you know, once... Once they smell blood in the water, you know, um, you know, uh, they start circling, right? And I said, that is such a very, very specific, like, you know, analogy of like, you know, sharks circling the water, right? Uh, so that stuck with me. And then when the media came around um, that last Saturday and interviewed me and they interviewed her, she corroborated what I had been told, right? So there was corroboration all across the board. The media was very, very... Um, and making sure that all the stories lined up what I what I was telling them and what she told me and and what and all that sort of stuff so um, and yet three months later right when I confronted her again she said oh no Jackie I never said that I never would have used those words I you know you make it sound as though I'm I, you know there, there were sharks circling the water I said that was exactly what you were using you know that, that was your physiology oh no that I would never have said that so who knows you know and ultimately she ended up leaving her job because of that whole Thing blowing up so I, I it's very strange um, would you please prove my message on a mod to prove now it seems what did you post I don't think it's on the phone now so aren't sharks they're more like <laughs> yeah look you know like I said it's you know I, I told people like people were so so incredibly worked up about the situation and um, you know with just cause but right right off the bat I, I told people I wrote a blog post about it which I probably maybe I'll reblog it on the Huffington Post <laughs> I wrote a blog post about it at the time I said look first of all you know um, people don't see like what goes on you know behind the scenes they don't see that you're with your child night and day like you know um, at the time I was doing two markets a week you know the rest of the week I'm with him like round the clock it's just me and him you know um, so uh, second of all I think that they do it because they feel like Noah needs that extra help because he looks so helpful helpless and when he came out of hospital he had a feeding tube around him all right so people see that and they think all oh, right you know this poor kid you know he's so helpless and he's sick why isn't the mom at home looking after him they don't realize that I have been home looking after him and and thirdly, they don't realize that going to the market is actually good for him 
because he's so happy when he goes to the market. He's sick of like, you know, just sitting at home night and day like the rest of the week. So like it's his favorite day of the week. He gets to see like the world go around. He gets to go on like the pony ride. He gets to walk around the market and say hello to other people. Well, he gets taken around the market. So he loves it there, you know, but for you to see a five second slice of my day and assume that I'm neglecting my child, um, you know, uh, kind of like because I'm chasing like, you know, money or something like that is like um yeah i said look it's a cultural thing right i said i grew up my, my parents used to sell street food right um like i told you guys before that you know there's stories that continue to this day in my little hometown in malaysia people say i oh, remember the tanks you know they worked so hard the kids were actually washing dishes in the middle of the night you know uh <laughs> by the street uh, on the on the on us you know, so I said, I grew up in the environment. You go to Asia, you see it all over the place, you know. And that was about the same time where there was this story that blew up in the media about this kid in the Philippines whose parents were street food vendors. And someone took a photo of this kid while his parents were selling street food. He was trying to do his homework um, from, you know, trying to get some lighting from the nearby McDonald's to do his homework. That's how I grew up, right? That's my. Um, that's my cultural background. Um, <laughs> I, you know, people say, why am I standing all the time? When I was uh, selling food in Malaysia, you know, when my parents, you know, at their store, I would be standing up, we would do our homework, right? You come home from school, you go, go home, get something, you, know, you come home from school, you, you, you work at the store, you rush home to get some food, and then you come back, and you're standing um, with your exercise books opened up at the counter while you're serving people, and you're actually like, you know, doing your homework when like, uh, during the quiet like periods of the evening and then you don't go at home till like 10 10 30 p.m at night and that you do that 370 uh, 365 days a year right that's how i grew up and i had good grades at school you know it's not a big deal you know but i guess i said culturally in australia people expect you know everything to be compartmentalized right they don't like to see like this kind of integration of work and family um and and, and all that sort of stuff so I saw it as that, right? But ultimately, I mean, my thinking around it has evolved to the point where I think, look, even though, even if they mean well, even if they think they're doing good for Noah, and even as recently as three weeks ago at the market, right? Noah shows up at the market. Um, he was with me for whatever reason. Maybe he was sick or something like that. He was with me at the market. Um, this is my last remaining market, weekly market. <clears throat> and... Um, he looks really cold, right? But I know Noah because I know <laughs> I, I see him like day and night, you know, all the time. I know him and he's a little monkey, right? And he just likes to stand around in his cot and just kind of like look like he's bored, right? And this woman came up to me she, and she was very, very nice about it. She said, look, um, I hope you don't get offended, but um, um, your son looks like he's cold. So I bought him this beanie, all right? Um, just you know to keep him warm right so <laughs> of course just as a gesture of appreciation i said oh thanks very much uh put the beanie on noah and what's he do Throw, throw it away <laughs> so people don't know you know they the, the underlying assumption is that i'm not doing enough for my child right whether it comes from a good noble place and i don't take offense um, to what she does, right? But no one looks sometimes so helpless and so innocent that people feel like they have to help him out, okay? So when someone actually tried to get that petition to have him removed, I think it comes from a good place. They think that they need to help him out. They think that I'm being a neglectful parent, right? Um, but like I said, that in itself can be seen as a form of discrimination, okay? Who are you to judge that Noah needs to, you know, be in a certain environment to thrive, you know? So it's frustrating. <laughs> main place that shouldn't told you the main place that she shouldn't told you so it happened <laughs> the um yeah so the <coughs> you know uh, the, the, the same woman who told me about the situation um even after all that right like i said she was adamant she said look you know even if i didn't like i said her her bosses said she should have all always kept it in-house and not even have told me about it so that I would have been oblivious to the controversy about me bringing Noah and they would have just thrown out the petition. But she was adamant. She said, look, even if I did that, right, there's nothing to stop that person to take it to the next level and report me directly to the authorities for child, uh, you know, child neglect or whatever. So whether that would happen, I don't know. Okay. 
so it's all <laughs> you know, those people who would know better than you. Yeah, it's like, yeah, awesome, grand. Thanks for following. <laughs> Yeah, I know. See, unfortunately, that's the reality of uh, the situation. People think they know better, all right? So it still happens. Like, like I said, I'm down to one remaining market stall a week. That's my only cash positive um, activity, right? So Twitch is nice and whatever, but I lose money from Twitch. <laughs> Which is well and good, whatever. I do it for fun. But um, yeah, my only cash positive market uh, which is just at a hospital, right? And I sell food there at lunchtime once a week. Um, a few months ago, same thing. This woman came up to me, I was cooking, and Noah was sitting in his cot just fa spacing off, right? So that's a nature of his um, uh, disability where he doesn't want a lot of stimulation, right? He just wants to be able to just chill out and just kind of like stare around and whatever. And uh, when you try and like give him entertainment, like I say, you know, you give him toys, he'll throw it out of his... Uh, I had an iPad in the past. I, you know, he used to watch the iPad. What did he do? He threw it out and threw it into a bucket of water that was nearby, right? And that killed the iPad. So he, you know, he knows what he wants. Sometimes he just wants to sit by himself, right? So this woman came up to me and started abusing me. And she said, Excuse me, ma'am, you know, you're cooking here. You're ignoring your son over there. I'm going to report you for child abuse. Okay. So I pulled out my phone and I started recording the interaction and she. See, um, basically, I said, look, you don't understand. I tried to explain to her, I, I said, you don't understand. My child's got special needs. So he, you know, he doesn't want that, you know, that extra stimulation. And then she turned it around. She used my words and turned around and said, oh, you are, you know, how dare you? You're disgusting. You're assuming because your child is uh, disabled that he's stupid and doesn't want stimulation. I said, that's not what I mean. I just mean that you're looking at it, you know, from these eyes of someone who doesn't know what my child is like. You know, I know what my child is like, right? So she was yelling at me and I ended up, of course, what did I do? I posted it on social media. And of course, again, it blows up, right? And I got invited onto Channel 10 to talk about it. So I did, right? And again, it, you know, created some level of outrage as well. And uh, <laughs> people just saw this angry woman yelling at me and whatever. Uh, but uh, to its credit, the hospital that organized the market, um, they reached out to me and said, we're really sorry about what happened. That woman wasn't a member of the hospital community. She happened to have come over here for the day for some special training, right? So we're very sorry. And we want to let you know that the hospital community is 100% like supportive of Noah being at the market. Um, and for what it's worth, what came out of it was that a group of women on social media, on a different Facebook group, they actually put out a basically a some crowdfunding thing to send Noah and me on a little holiday. So we ended up going on a cruise, a 10 day cruise, thanks to the generosity of these people, which I was really, really, in all honesty, I was really, really embarrassed to accept it. I said, look, I don't want to, you know, it sounds like I don't want to come across as a victim. All right. I shared it because I think people need to know that uh, this is what women, um, I know it's uh, everybody experiences some level of like hardship in whatever they do. I want people to see this is what, you know, how hard it is to kind of like have a go at things as a single mom, you know, uh, so, so that they can learn from this, right? Sort of thing. I'm not asking for handouts or whatever, but you know, they, these women say, look, you know, you are basically, if you, re if you refuse our, uh, token of, um, our, our show of uh, support, you're really kind of like, you know, essentially rejecting like, kind of like, whatever, I don't know how you would phrase it. <laughs> but yeah, so they put out a call, you know, in their Facebook group for people to support, to just kind of like show their appreciation for what a, a, a struggling mom is doing sort of thing. So, so within less than a day, they hit their target to, uh, to send me and Noah on a little cruise. So that was nice. I shouldn't do that sort of thing. Always assume the parents, yeah, uh, uh, he threw the iPad. Yeah, <laughs> recording comments was a really good idea. <laughs> it really doesn't look like. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's right. That's the thing. People need to give the parent the benefit of the doubt, right? I think that's, if nothing else, that's one lesson to learn out of it. Um, but, you know, to be fair, like I said, a lot of people do it out of like, you know, from a good place. Just like that woman who went and actually spent money to buy a, uh, a beanie for Noah, right? A knitted beanie for Noah. And of course, I know, <laughs> I know as a mom that he has never kept anything on his head for more than two seconds, all right? So <laughs> that's why he didn't have one. Um, but still, no exceptions, yeah. Yeah, I know. But 
So that's that's my very very long rant about why I no longer have a restaurant. Okay, um, not to say that having a restaurant was my dream and my be all and end all. I was always a very reluctant restaurateur. I opened it because people were there was a lot of demand, a lot of pressure on why I don't open a restaurant. And to this day, if I wanted to open a restaurant again, I can probably do it within twenty four hours, right? Because there's always a lot of demand for someone like me um, to spearhead some kind of like there are a lot of people who want the idea of investing in a restaurant right who don't actually know how to cook themselves so it's not hard for me to but it's just not i'm no longer at that stage in my life i yeah i'm happy doing what i'm doing so there you go <laughs> my grand my grandbaby has autism and throws stuff he can't talk zero boom anything goes yeah but hey, it's a freebie, <laughs> I know, right? I don't know what I'm going to do with it now. Yeah, well, that's the thing, you know, people, you know, Noah is non-verbal as well, so he gets frustrated a little bit sometimes, um, but you know, he's he's generally very, you, I don't know if you guys have seen him around here sometimes, so he's very genial, he's very, like, happy and whatever, but he just looks, sometimes he looks so helpless that people feel that, oh, look, you know, this woman, she's rough with her kid, you know, uh, sort of thing but yeah I mean like when I try to respond on social media about some of these complaints um, people say oh when you say okay look he's not he's not under stimulated I, I, I give him an iPad to watch his shows and people then someone else will jump in and say oh right you know this is the idea her idea of like babysitting like basically is to distract the kid um, by letting him sit in front of an iPad for 10 hours a day or something stupid like that, which is not, of course, my, you know, what I'm trying to say. But seriously, if you guys ever end up in, a, uh, in, in any controversy on, in the news or whatever, just don't read the comments, all right, because it is like soul destroying, like, <laughs> and especially if ever you end up in the Daily Mail, um, don't, don't read the comments. The Daily Mail commenters are just, absolute trolls all right so even in a story like that they just kind of think oh she's making it up she's after her 15 minutes of fame she's a you know it's a publicity stunt and whatever just horrible horrible people huh so many different conditions yeah that's true yeah yeah <laughs> that's true so there you go that's the story of my whatever but um actually a year ago i actually uh, approached the daily mail about another story about another controversy right this is about my personal life and um, they were going to publish it at 3 a.m. in the night. And then apparently their lawyer stepped in and said, look, you know, this could be defamatory, which it wasn't because other news media had covered it. But and I was a little bit annoyed at the time, but I am so glad now in hindsight that they didn't publish it because I had forgotten at the time what absolute jerks Daily Mail <laughs> readers can be. <laughs> and I'm awkward and thinking, oh, how is that related to introvert to nonverbalness? Yeah, that's true. No comments today because the mods won't allow it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> People want to argue. Yeah, I know exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, autism is, is, yeah, it's a tough gig. And people say the darndest thing, you know, like, um, what they say? Is it autism or something like that? But I mean, I don't take offense, right? I'm not that easily offended. So don't feel like you guys have to say the right thing or whatever. But yeah, people say the darndest thing. They say, oh, just as well he's got uh, Down syndrome, syndrome and not autism, you know, because, you know, <laughs> because there are autism kids can be really hard to uh, handle or something like that. Oh, yeah, whatever. But <laughs> I'm not offended, but I just think it's funny how, or they'll say, oh, look, you know, oh, he doesn't look like he's got Down syndrome at all, you know, sort of thing. So you're lucky he doesn't look like he's got Down syndrome at all. It's like, you know, <laughs> some, some people take offense to it, but I don't. I just think it's funny that things just kind of roll off people's tongues, you know, when they don't know what to say about your son. <laughs> no, those two conditions, because, it, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> so true. Yeah, well, so there you go, guys. That's my sambal. Uh, I was going to put it in a thing up. Okay, so this you can stick in a jar and it will go really well with any kind of like a dish, like just as a dip, right? As a, a condiment, okay? And this is my sour fish soup, which has gone cold now. I'm going to have to zip zap it before I eat it. And this is the caramelized fish, okay? Which is actually really, really good. 
And I'm going to post the recipes on my uh, website, which is jackiem.com.au. So don't forget to check it out. And it will take me a couple of days. Uh, it should be up before. It should be up in the next couple of days. I'm just a little bit lazy. Roast the fish. <laughs> these are fish fillets, right? So these are like, that's half a kilo, 500 grams of fish over here. And the other 500 grams in this soup over here. Right, so traditionally, again, just to recap, um, traditionally this is made using eel. And traditionally, apparently they use the one fish and they halve it and they make these two different dishes and the flavors are meant to complement each other and you're meant to eat it with lots of rice, right? So that's why, and they're usually also cooked in clay pot. So I've basically made a few changes to it and um, I'm using, I used uh, barramundi fillets today, so no bones, and these were frozen barramundi fillets as well. The other thing I did was also I just kind of like drenched it in a little bit of like tapioca flour and flash fried them sort of like just to help them hold their shape a little bit better because um, they can be quite soft like in, their, in their initially I'm a bit autistic beyond occasional sensory overload it's never hurt me oh that's cool yeah yeah look uh, <laughs> I think yeah Eel, where do you get that in Australia Chinese Asian grocery store uh, Asian uh, Asian fish shops sometimes have them. I don't know how popular they are, in all honesty. I have seen them in Asian fish shops, but you know, you would very rarely find it in your standard um, Australian fish shop, right? So Asian fish shops are where I do my fish shopping. They tend to be a lot cheaper as well. Everything tends to be quite a lot cheaper, especially prawns at Asian, grocery, at Asian fish shops. So yeah, but there you go. So until uh, this, Wednesday, again, don't forget the time change, right? My schedule's all been um, changed around. So my next broadcast is Wednesday at 5 p.m. Sydney time, which is GMT plus 10. Um, I do love my eel. That's interesting with fish for eel, really. Um, the only eel that I really like is the Japanese eel with the sushi, you know, the, the, the sushi uh, nigri with the, the eel, that barbecue eel, that I like. But generally, I don't actually seek out eel. It's not something I grew up eating, in all honesty. Um, yeah. Uh, we eat catfish. Is it catfish or eel? Yeah, I think they use catfish as well for this dish, right? You should. I always imagine that eel would be too bony um, for whatever reason, okay? Um, yeah. Unagi, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. I know. <laughs> you know why we love it? It's because of the sugar. You can taste the sweet, like, you know. Essentially, it's not too different in flavor, right, to what we just did here. Because it's essentially, unagi is essentially kind of like caramelized sugar and soy sauce um, um, brushed onto eel, right? Kabayaki sauce. What's kabayaki sauce? Unagi. I know, barbecue eel. This catfish here, I don't eat it. Malaysia has a uh, catfish. There's a town in Malaysia called Temerlo. I actually went and filmed there, right? I filmed a, a TV pilot there. And they're famous for catfish. Uh, a particular type of catfish called ikan patin. And oh, it is fantastic. It's like, it's like a two hour drive out of Kuala Lumpur, but I would just drive there next time I'm in KL, I would just drive there just to eat the catfish again. It's, uh, yeah, it's, you wouldn't think because you always imagine that catfish would be quite strong flavored, but they steamed it um, with a lot of ginger and kind of like a special soy mixture. Um, it's like pureed ginger and garlic. It was also had nice and fatty texture. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's why apparently um, this dish would usually be quite fatty. Uh, the caramelized fish would usually be quite fatty because um, because of the eel, right? So like I said, when we went to eat it at the restaurant last week, um, through some cross wires, they gave us uh, the dish not using eel, but using perch instead, right? Because perch, I guess, you know, some Westerners are averse to eating more exotic stuff like, like eel, right? Catfish is a good replacement for eel. Is that right? You know, I'm, I'm trying to think whether they offered catfish as well in that restaurant. I'm trying to think. The eel, catfish. I think so too, you know. I think it was catfish. Because I think, because we were filming at that restaurant, right? This is for a marketing campaign coming out. And I think by mistake, because I had it stuck in my head that it was catfish, I kept saying 
when it was you know kind of we did quite a few takes i kept saying catfish by mistake so it could have been catfish that was meant to be in that dish yeah but anyway yeah phone's about to run out now okay see you highlings yeah uh, i'm gonna head off too guys um because i gotta clean up and then i gotta i gotta do some work as well but um so don't forget like i said this wednesday 5 p.m sydney time and friday 6 p.m um and some point this week, I'm going to do another draw, all right? So congratulations to Johan and congratulations to, who was the other person? Edge of Night for <laughs> winning last Saturday night's draw. Um, so uh, I will get your stuff out this week. But this week, maybe we'll do another draw for the, um, for the Lenovo Mini Speaker. And maybe we'll do a draw for <clears throat> something else as well. But I've got a bunch of stuff lined up. So I still have the Mini Speakers. I've still got the Rode microphones and I've got um, uh, some Australian candy as well, all right, for you guys to stand a chance of uh, winning. So thank you guys and have a great uh, rest of the day or rest of the evening or uh, your upcoming day. And I will see you. I'll see you this Wednesday.